All right, we're back. Hopefully we have fixed the problem. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Um, I've noticed when TikTok runs updates and stuff, everything kind of breaks. So hopefully this fixes it. And hopefully we can carry on with our spooky night. All right, everybody tap the screen, get some hearts going, get some people in here. Hopefully our two guests come back. Um, that was crazy. I don't know where Chris is. <laughs> Chris, get back in here. Um. Hopefully that fixes it. You did, oh, you didn't change the picture. Yeah, I didn't want to take the time to do it. Uh, <laughs> I just okay, all right, let's try Melissa again and see if it works right. this time. I hope it works. Melissa! Am I on the phone? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Hi! I enjoy watching this every night. Yeah, awesome. I'm glad you yeah. do. Okay, well, okay, I'm nervous because I'm, this is my first time going live, but I've got so many stories. What do you want me to start with, glitch or paranormal? Um, You pick just something super scary, something that you think was the spookiest of all. Okay, I got you. Okay, so <laughs> I was, um... I was 19 years old, living with my mom. We, um moved into this uh house that was built in the 1800s and um it used to be like one house but then um they separated it and made it into like two different apartments where you could go in like the one side for the back apartment and the you know front for the first apartment well when we moved in there um i was on the computer myspace you know back in them days I was on MySpace and um I heard a gunshot and no one lived in the house behind or on the in the house behind us there. Well, I heard a gunshot and it scared me while I hit the floor like I was nervous. Well, the next night um I hear a gunshot. I tell my mom that I heard, you know, a gunshot two nights in a row. I was like, "Did you hear it?" She was like, "No, I didn't hear it." I was like, "Okay, that's weird." Well, then a couple of nights later, I'm in bed asleep, and next thing I know, I'm being woken up, being choked by some guy that wasn't even there, but he was choking me. And um, then I saw a pic, or not saw a picture, sorry. I saw, like, a vision of this girl, like, walking down the stairs with, like, this beautiful dress on, and she, she was beautiful. Well, anyway, time went on and more things happened in the house. Like, I got choked again, heard a gunshot again. Well, finally, me and my friends, we were like, let's do some research on this house. We looked it up and come to find out this guy literally unalived his sister with a pew pew. And I was living it. Like, he choked her and everything, and when he unalived her, like, I don't know if I, she was telling me the story or how I got involved, but it's like I was reliving it. Wow, so it's kind of like, do you, are you sensitive or like, do you have me? Oh, yeah, my whole life. Mm -hmm. My whole life I've had weird, like, paranormal things go on. Yeah. Um, like for instance, there was this one time, uh, I was 16 years old, um, we had, uh, <laughs> we had moved into this house and, um, every morning at seven o'clock, I heard footsteps going up the stairs and my mom didn't hear it. And I'm like, come on, you got to hear that. And she was like, I don't hear anything. It's probably a raccoon or a squirrel. I said every morning at seven o'clock, 
I said, okay, mom. I saw the next morning, I woke her up at 6.50 so she could get a cigarette and get ready to listen to this with me because I kept hearing these footsteps every morning. Like, it'd be like, click, 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 boom, and then nothing. So, I woke her up, got her ready. She ended up hearing it. And she was like, I don't know. She goes, it's probably just an animal. I was like, okay. So, she goes to bingo that night. Whenever she um gets the bingo, she runs into an old friend because we had lived in Georgia and we had just moved back to Indiana. Well, she ran into an old friend and the friend was like, oh, well, where are you living now? She told her and she goes, oh, you know, a lady just passed away two months ago, had a heart attack going up the stairs. In the house, the same house? Yeah. So I was hearing that woman every morning go up them stairs and Now was that connected to the pew pew incident? Oh goodness or... no, I got so many, honey. No. Oh, I can okay. tell you more about the pew pew one though. Um one night I was um in the um bathroom taking a shower and I hear my mom or I thought I heard my mom scream my name. So I go out there, and I'm like, what? She goes, I didn't say nothing. So I get back in the shower. A few seconds later, I hear her say my name again. I get out, and I'm like, what? And she was like, I'm not calling you. And I was like, this ain't funny now. So then I get back in the shower. Next thing I know, like, the shampoo bottles they came up, did like a little tornado, and hit the bottom of the tub. I ran out oh, of wow. that shower so damn quick. Oh, my God, I was so scared. So then, I too. <laughs> so then I get out and um, I go to take the garbage out, and my baby's dad was in the um kitchen. So I go out, take the garbage out. I go to go back in. The door's locked. So I'm like, "Why'd you lock me out?" He goes, "I didn't lock you out." So I go around the house and knock on the front door, and my mom lets me in. She goes, "What the hell are you doing tonight?" I'm like, "Someone locked me out." So that pew pew one man, I had, I, oh my goodness, I had so many stories there. Gosh, yeah, that sounds like a, a really active place. And for some reason that instantly made me think of the DeFeo incident. I don't know that from, one. like Amityville. Have you ever seen Amityville Horror? Mm-mm. The, the old one is actually not too bad of a movie. They've done a bunch of remakes, but I don't think the remakes are very good. Um, but yeah, it's kind of similar to that. Um, really? Like the the you know, history of the house that you're talking about. That's crazy. Uh, I got to check that out now. You said the original yeah, one? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the original 70s movie. And if you're, if you're a reader, the book is probably better. Oh, actually, okay. yeah, movie. I love to read. Yeah. So you said you had a glitch in the matrix as well. Yeah, um, it was it was funny. I'm doing laundry, and um, I get my son's clothes done, and I know that I washed two of his um, he had color socks, and I know that the, a pair of red ones were in there. Well, once I got them out of the wash, they weren't there. I found them in the floor in another room. And so I'm like, all right, so I did the second load of laundry, and I put the blue ones in there, and I said, well, at least I know the blue ones are going in this time. Get the wash done, pull them out, there's one blue, one red. And, yeah, and I couldn't find the blue one at all. Two weeks later, I found it behind my microwave. Behind the microwave? How far <laughs> behind the microwave? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine, but two weeks later, I found it behind my microwave. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, that kind of sounds like uh, gnomes, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you about this one time. Okay, so um, I um, this place, man, this place was scary, though, when we moved in. I'll tell you about it in a second, but let me tell you about the first thing first. Okay, so I get go to Walgreens, get my medicine, bring it in, set it on the kitchen table with a whole bunch of bags, you know, from the store. And I get it, and I put everything away. I go to get my medicine, and I can't find it. Well, at this time, my baby dad had a problem of 
taking them when I wasn't looking. So I thought he took them, and I'm like, okay, I'm not playing. I was like, give me my medicine, and he was like, I don't have them. And I said, like, I'd believe you anyway, and he goes, I swear. He goes, I really don't have them this time. So I'm like, okay. So I go outside, looking around, seeing if maybe I dropped it, even though I know I set it on the table. So I go around the car, couldn't find it. I get in the back of the trunk. Now, remind you, I wasn't even in the trunk. I popped the trunk, and there's my medicine in the middle of the trunk. That is, I've experienced paranormal activity like that, where things go missing and then reappear in weird places. Why? That is uh, so weird. Yeah, it is. It's like, it's like it's all they can do, but they want to get your attention. So they do that. Mm hmm. I don't know. It's just, it's weird to me, like how stuff like that happens. Well, when, um, let me tell you about, uh, this one real quick and then I'll tell you about five years old. Um, at the same house where the medicine came up missing. Okay, me and my friend was outside. I didn't smoke in my house. So me and my friend was outside smoking a cigarette. And it was like about 1030 at night. And remind you, it's like January in Indiana. So you know, it's cold snow, you know. Well, we're out there um, smoking a cigarette. And all of a sudden, we hear like this like out of nowhere, like this, and um, we feel this hot wind, hot wind, come through us, and all of a sudden, we hear something break, and I thought, and I looked over, and you know the uh, plastic trees that you have up for Christmas with the lights around it? Well, that had hit the ground, so I'm like, that fell over, and she goes, no, I heard glass, and I was like, well, I did too, I said, but I don't know what it could have been, I said, better, yeah, why was that hot, wind? what the hell just happened? Well, the next morning, we go outside to smoke a cigarette, at like 7 in the morning, there's an ambulance and cops next door, the old man had passed away from a heart attack, dropped his cup, and that and it shattered, and that's what we heard, and we felt death go through us to him. Oh my gosh! I, I know. For a minute, you I thought you were going to say you experienced a ghost train because that's on my bucket list of things I want to see as a ghost train. <laughs> no, but um, it, I don't. He was a very evil man, so yeah. I don't know if it was like you know demons coming to get him. I'm not sure, but it. It's, you know how a train sounds, like that roar? Mm -hmm. And it was hot. That wind was so hot. And for the middle of January, it should have been cold, cold wind. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, but it was hot. And like I said, we heard the shatter, the glass. We heard it. And come to find out, that man passed away around the... Because we went and talked to the um cop. He passed away, he said, around 10.30 the previous night. And, like I said, his coffee cup was there shattered. And we literally heard that from across the street. We felt death go through us. Have you ever heard of the death coach? It's an old Irish belief. No. I'm Irish, it so tell makes me. me yeah, I am too. It kind of makes me think of that, like the old the old death coach stories. Uh, you've probably heard of banshees, right? The what, honey? It's kind of. Have you ever heard of banshees? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of folklore like that. Um, but the death coach is supposedly like if you're of Irish descent, you know, when when it's time for you to pass, the death coach will come for you. I know somebody uh, when I was a kid told me a story about having like a weird dream that a death coach came and picked them up to tell them that someone in their immediate family was about to pass. And uh, I was just wondering if maybe you'd ever heard of that and maybe you, mm -mm. you know, right. possibly maybe that could have been what it was. <laughs> it possibly could have been, but yeah, no. Girl, you got me wanting to look into a lot of stuff already tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Google it. The death coach I sure will. Yeah, there's a lot of stories out there about it, too. I'd love to get some stories like that on the live, but so far we've never had anybody with the death coach story. Right. Except yeah, maybe you. 
<laughs> that, I mean, it possibly could it be. I like I said, I'm not too sure about the stories of it, but it could. I could be your first girl. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we really appreciate you coming up. You have some really good stories, and and oh, honey, that ain't even the half of it. You ever want me up again? Just let me know. <laughs> Well, hey, stick around. You might maybe hop back on in a little bit. <laughs> All right, sure. But well, like I said, I really enjoy your life. I've been following you I'm now really for, glad. I want to say, a little over a month. I came across you. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad you like them. Of course. Thank you. And thanks for having me up. Thank you. Sarah, can you uh, hear me? I think we... Yes. Oh, uh, okay. You. Just wondering, because uh, sometimes when I speak, you know how the little, uh, my little box will, like, uh, do that thing when I'm speaking? It'll have, mm -hmm. like, the, the little circle? Sometimes it, like, lags. Um, but anyway, there's a ghost train in Red Dead Redemption 2, actually. I know. <laughs> oh, you saw yes. it? Yes. Listen, Red Dead is one of my obsessions. I have watched every video. I have attempted everything on that game at this point there's only a couple things that i never got to do but um yeah yeah the ghost train is really cool all right we got misfit guys tap the screen get get our likes up the more people we get in here the more ghost stories we get so we got to get some hearts all right misfit you are up hi how are you good how are you I'm doing good. This is really interesting. I'm like so intrigued by this entire live because I've never come across one like this. I have so many. Oh, there's stories. a few. A few people have actually taken this live and, and done it for their own, but I'm the original. You're the first <laughs> one. So you know what? I guess the algorithm is doing you right because they're showing me you first. So awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but I have... um. I guess, I mean, I've got tons and tons and tons of stories just like Melissa, but I wanted to use one that wasn't only involving myself, but where there were four people that all experienced sort of the same. Well, I, I can't say the same thing all at the same time because we all had like different experiences, but some we shared. So, yeah, it was just like, I'm talking like, poltergeist in real life it was insane um i've always been a really spiritual person i've always ex like as a child i've seen ghosts and things like that so like to even see one it, it it's not like shocking to me but what i experienced there at this airbnb was something that i've yeah I, I no i'll never ever forget it <laughs> so if um you don't mind i'll begin um yeah go for it yeah so it was basically like you can say um my husband and i his cousin and uh his wife along with her daughter and my two daughters now, at the time, one of my daughters were, I think, maybe one or two years old. So she didn't really speak or anything like that. But the, the other two little girls were about, I want to say, like five or six. So they were pretty aware of, like, certain things that were going on. So um, the whole thing was, you know, we, we booked this Airbnb. And um, to start out... We were, it was in Florida, I should say that. So, so immediately we were like, let's get in the pool. And there was a jacuzzi. So we were like, let's do that. Like first thing. So, um, that's what we were about to do. However, um, the girls were in their room playing and they ran out screaming. Now this is the first thing that happened. Um, they ran out screaming, saying that the door slammed by itself. And we were like, that's, you know, odd because we were all in the house and we just assumed that it was like suction, you know, that maybe we had opened another door and it just 
slammed. But when we had gone, and it's so funny that Melissa spoke about that hot air, because a lot of people automatically assume like that if there's like a ghostly presence or something that it's going to be like this chilling air. But we also experienced that hot air. It almost felt like there was a heater or something near, which I should probably say that we were like in the middle of summer. So like to feel this type of heat, you would think that it's coming from outside. So immediately we went to the garage thinking, cause they had like a closed in garage in this Airbnb. So we were like, maybe the garage door is open or maybe they have like a dryer running or something like that. So we go into the garage and nothing of a sort. Actually, the garage wasn't even hot. It was cold. It's as if it was like vented. So we were really confused because we felt like this heat coming from somewhere, but couldn't find the source. We brushed it off and we were like, okay, going about what we were doing back to getting into the jacuzzi and having a pool night and okay so later on that night um i got a bit tired so i decided to go to bed everyone else is up meaning my husband his cousin and his wife along with the kids i i don't know why but i got extremely tired for no reason at all I go to bed and I'm in this room and I kid you not, my arms out of my sleep were moving on their own and I was like sweating and I, I couldn't like control my own body. My arms were doing their own thing. And at the same time I was having a nightmare. So <clears throat> I get up thinking, I don't know. I, again, brushed it off. I get up and I'm, I'm sweating, sweating so badly that I'm like, I, I'll go in the front and I'm like, you guys, do you have the heat on? Because it's so hot. Like I can't breathe. Like I was dripping in sweat and they are freezing. They have blankets wrapped around them because it was so cold in the house. And when I walked into the living room, it was my husband and my cousin's wife and they were playing, well, they're actually, they were all also cousins. So like, it's hard to explain, but they're related as well. So it wasn't weird, but anyways, they were playing cards across from each other, like sitting at a table, like face to face. And they're both like in these blankets, like shivering from how cold they are. And I'm like sweating. And they're like, what are you talking about? It's, it's, it's so cold. So I'm like, you know what? You guys are crazy, whatever. And then my daughter comes to me like crying hysterically. Why are you crying? Like what's going on? And she's like, oh, my friend doesn't want to sleep with me. She wants to sleep with her mom because she's scared. And we were supposed to have a sleepover and sleep in the same bed and yada, yada, yada. But she's like, but my friend is scared and she wants to sleep with her mom so i sat in a separate room altogether from where everyone else was at with just my daughter and in the room i'm sitting in there's this like sort of like chandelier but i don't know if you guys remember like the old school like ikea type chandeliers where they were almost like sort of i won't say paper mache but they were like these huge like flower type looking things do you remember Anything yeah. Like that. Okay. <laughs> so they had this in the center of this room that we're sitting in and I'm sitting with my daughter and I'm consoling her and I'm like, it's okay. You know, we have a few more nights here, blah, blah, blah. She's crying and I'm looking at this, I'm going to call it chandelier because I don't know what else to call it. And it starts spinning. And my daughter tells me out of nowhere, like, she's like, I'm really scared, mom. I don't know why I just feel so scared. 
in this house. And at the time she's like five or six. And she's like, I just feel really scared. I don't like how it feels here. And I'm like, baby, it's okay. You know, you're fine. It's just because you're not used to sleeping alone or whatever. So I'm watching this thing spin. And I know about, you know, air drafts, you know, vents and things of that nature. And I'm like, well, maybe the air just turned on. It's light. It could be spinning because the air turned on. Well, it goes from spinning in one direction and then it starts spinning in the other direction. And I'm like, okay, well, again, maybe it just, it's so light, whatever. Then it just like stops. Like it goes from spinning spinning like crazy to where I don't even want my daughter to look at it because I know she'd get freaked out and then it just stops like if it knew that I was looking at it I don't know how else to describe it and then it starts going into the opposite direction after it like dead stopped and then starts spinning as quickly as possible so like that's I literally brushed that off I was like I'm going insane I'm going insane. I literally just like checked it off as that. I'm tired. I'm delusional at this point. Okay. So I get her to bed. Everybody's cool. I go back to my husband and his cousin playing cards. As soon as I walk in, I look at their faces and they are like white as can be. I'm like, what just happened? And she's talking to him, he's talking to her, and they go, you felt it, didn't you? Did you not feel that just now? Did you not just feel that? And again, like, we're not, like, we're not taking any type of drugs, we're not doing anything like that. Like, literally, I think the max was, like, maybe some beers, okay? But at this point, it's late. Everybody already had stopped drinking, like, there's, there's, like, we're just hanging out at this point. And... My husband is a complete skeptic. Like he doesn't believe in ghosts. He doesn't believe in any of that kind of stuff. So like his face was like, what just happened? And both of them were in complete shock. And I look at both of them, I'm like, what just happened to you guys? And so they go, something just went through us. And I'm like, what do you mean? What, what went through you? Now, I already had my situation go on in the room by myself where my arms were doing their own thing. And I watched that thing spin. I didn't tell anyone about it. And my daughter telling me that she she saw stuff. Also, I I forgot to mention she saw stuff moving in the room. I didn't tell no one yet. So they say that and they're like, we literally felt something go through us. And we saw it like pass by and then go into us. And I'm like, okay, like you guys sound crazy. Like, you know, what, what, what does this mean? So they're freaked out. Like they're shaking at this point. And I'm like, not used to that because both of these people are not the kind that would even believe in it but they're shaking. I'm like, okay, so something just happened. (laughs) Well, after this, every single bump in the night that you've ever heard of starts happening. No kidding. This house has this dining room that they're sitting in. And then it's, it's like kind of blocked off. Like you have to walk through a different room in order to get into the kitchen, the living room, and then a hallway where the rest of the bedrooms are. We start hearing stuff going on in the bedrooms. Like it sounds like someone is having a, a, a like raging out in one of these bedrooms, like throwing stuff against the walls, um, shuffling, running up and down. Like it went off after that, after they said those words, the house went into complete rage. Everything was going off and we're looking at each other and we're all like, is this happening? Is this like real right now? I kid you not, we wouldn't even go into the bedroom because there was so much stuff moving. Like you can hear stuff banging against the walls. 
like being thrown. And it was to the point where we took the mattress out of the bedroom and put it into the living room because we didn't even want to be back there. So this is all now, now it's about like 4 a.m. at this point. We have the mattress in the living room and there's a sliding glass door. We have the mattress like close to this sliding glass door. The entire glass door, as soon as we lay our eyes on it, there was ice that just went up the entire door. Ice, like from the bottom to the top, because you have to imagine you put a mattress on the floor, you're at the, on the floor. It was like as if whatever this was knew where your eyes were going to lay or, or, or was listening to what you were talking about. So again, we laid our eyes on this glass door and the ice went from the bottom and it rose all the way up to the top. And I mentioned it to my husband. I'm like, do you see what I see? Is this really happening? And you can see the icicles, like the little crystals, like going up the the door and now there's also these like you you know the old like vertical blinds like the long ones the ones that are like you have to slide them do you know what i mean yeah yeah okay like the really really long blinds not the ones that like you pull the string and they like go up I'm talking about the ones where you have this like long hanging um, pole and you got to slide them across or like twist that little pole. Okay. Mm -hmm. These type. Okay. As I mentioned about the ice going up this glass um, door and my husband's like, yeah, I see it. And he's frozen. Literally like, like one of these blades out of these blinds starts spinning by itself where all the rest of them are sitting still. This thing starts spinning. And I'm like, both of our, our jaws are down because we're both staring at it. We see it happening and we're not even talking at this point. We're just like, yeah, that's happening. Like we're thinking the same thing, like what? It spun so fast, the thing fell off of the rack, okay? And then after it fell, we're like, we th we're thinking it's over and we're like, oh my God, did you just see that? And then after that, it went like one by one. They all started doing it, but all like, like, like I said, one by one, until they all fell off. And not only spinning, but swaying side to side but like only one blade one blade by itself okay <laughs> so we're like obviously no matter where we go in this house like whatever is going on is gonna like do something wherever we're at oh oh i forgot to mention there was a huge like picture or like portrait behind us where we were sitting because at this point we were in the living room that whole thing came off the wall it was huge. It came off the wall. It looked like we like trashed this place. It came off the wall. Now the sun comes up. We're ready to leave. We are so ready to get out of this place. We're packing up all of our stuff. We're starting to get our kids into the car. We're getting like the last few things. So the bathroom in this place, like it's the type of bathroom door where there's a like a crack underneath and the tiles are shiny so if you if there's someone in there you can kind of see their feet like the shadow of their feet because it's you see the reflection yeah i know what you mean mine does it too <laughs> okay <laughs> so it's like that and um i at the time was a smoker so i'm out front and smoking a cigarette, kind of just waiting for my husband to come outside. And apparently, he asks um, his cousin, like, 
where's where where is she where's miss right and he's like i don't know like i don't know where she's at did you check the bathroom because they didn't know i was out front so apparently he looks in the bathroom and he sees like feet he sees like someone's in there so he's like knocking on the door and he's talking to me apparently there's no response but there's feet you know going around and you can see someone's in there okay so now <clears throat> he goes back into the bedroom where our stuff was the same room where we took the mattress out and gets you know our luggage and whatever whatever comes or is not out of the room yet but he sees me he sees me pass by because in order for me to come out of the bathroom if i were in the bathroom i'd have to pass by the room that he was in he sees me pass by so he goes and follows me and he's talking to me and saying hey you know did you get blah 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 you know this this and that follows me around the house and is talking to me and he's getting mad now because i'm not responding however that was not me i was not in there I was outside the entire time and he saw me outside and everyone else found me outside and was like, were you outside the entire time? I'm like, yes, I, I, I've been smoking a cigarette. I've been out here this entire time. Now this was in the time span of only five minutes, but everyone saw me quote unquote inside when I was never in there. And they all freaked out because apparently this thing like, was mimicking me was literally wearing my clothes had my my hair everything like was me and um we tried to leave when we tried to leave immediately it went from sunshine to pouring down rain we couldn't find the lock to lock the store because it was like again an airbnb um somehow the lock we, we we couldn't find it i i don't know how I, I it was like the kind of like come off the door i it's hard to explain i i think those who have <laughs> been in airbnbs understand um they have the detachable things or whatever um like anything that could prevent us from leaving was preventing us from leaving um we get on the highway and it's raining so hard like we've already passed a few exits it's raining so hard that we're like guys we need to pull over because this is not safe to travel with our our kids it's raining that bad like we think there's going to be a tornado at some point that's how bad we pull off the exit again we've been driving for miles we end up right back at the house right back like i'm getting chills right back there and wow <laughs> i swear i'm not lying i swear there are four adult witnesses like two to it like yeah it, it still gives me chills until this day like right back and we were driving for like 20 minutes we passed exits like i'm actually from that same city we were just staying in the airbnb because they had a pool and it was a bigger house so like i know the city we we drove way past it and somehow ended up right back yeah we we paid so much on like cleaning fees and stuff we're like you know what we're not even gonna because we were gonna clean it and stuff like that but we didn't want to stay anymore after it started mimicking us and yeah. even like voices and things oh god it was just like yeah so that's just the one story <laughs> but i promise you yeah that's it. pretty amazing you know we have a lot of stories on here and i have a story personally about like doppelganger mm -hmm. incidents that's what i call them uh a lot of people in the comments are saying mimic and you know there's different names for it i prefer doppelganger because it sounds spookier <laughs> but uh one thing that i never remember to ask people with experiences like that did you have any really bad luck or like anything bad happen following this incident i think so 
I think so, yeah. Because a doppelganger is a bad omen in, I think, German folklore. Uh, so, and I, I always wonder about that, but I never remember to ask. So I was just curious if you could pinpoint. I, I had tremendous amounts of sleep paralysis and um, that, ugh, that's a whole nother story because I don't just like sum it up to like sleep paralysis. Like it's so much more than that. But yeah, that did follow after that. Wow, that's pretty terrifying. I think you've scared everybody in the comments thoroughly. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but I mean, these things are real, like it happens. You know, hey, that's what we're here for is to scare each other with stories. So <laughs> good job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, that the the part I, another thing I was interested in, you were talking about the uh, the spinning um, spinning. I won't go on like a diatribe here, but spinning is kind of like a sacred magical um, thing. It's it's symbolic in magic and in the paranormal and stuff like that. And uh, I was just curious, do you know anything about like divination, like uh, particularly pendulum divination? Because it kind of made me think of that when you were talking about. Huh. Um, and now that you mentioned that, it did sway at first mm -hmm. at first it did sway similar to a pendulum and actually that's what drew my attention is because it was swaying and then it would just stop yeah that's what reminded just me of the like pendulum when you were pendulum. telling that part but yeah but during the time that this was going on all i was doing was consoling my daughter like there was no questions mm -hmm. asked there there were no nothing like that going on like in my head or anything like that like i was just concerned about my daughter so i don't know where it was going with it but it was going off it was maybe it was mad because i wasn't giving it attention and it started yeah i think that's, out of control you know mm -hmm. i think that's what it wanted was your attention that's what it sounds like is that it was just wanting some attention <laughs> and you know i there's a few parts that i I did leave out. Um, one of the reasons why my daughter was scared was because the girls, um, they had found some dolls in this Airbnb, some old baby dolls, and they started playing with them. And they thought that we were going to get mad because they were messing with stuff that they shouldn't have been you know like we told them like we're not in our house you know if you find anything don't mess with it it's not our house so they didn't tell us about that until we left but they had taken photos of these dolls and i'm telling you these dolls were from like the 80s maybe older they played with them they also um, had said that the closet door was moving and opening and closing and that it started with the kids it really did it started with them when they started messing with these dolls and apparently these dolls were in the closet like kind of stored away and as children do you know they discovered them and um there was that um there was also a point where um i went where i went into the living room and i had said that i was steaming hot but they had felt this cool ice cold something go through them like my my husband and his cousin um for some reason she and i both had this feeling to pull a like sofa away from the wall because she had saw an old lady sitting on this sofa. And when we pulled it away from the wall, there was actually something that looked like a blood stain behind the sofa. And we went as far as pulling the carpet up on that, like that part, just because we wanted to see if it actually dripped down and it did. It looked like a blood stain, like it was, 
a dark brown. And yeah, so there is like, there's a few things that just like I said in the comments, like it's hard to pull these stories together because there's so many things happening at once in order mm -hmm. to like put them in order. You forget yeah. certain things. Plus this was going back maybe um, seven, eight years ago. So yeah, there, there was like, it, it was constant and it was only, I mean, I'm counting two days by us checking in and then leaving the next day like those i don't even think it was a total of two days i think it might have been closer to 24 hours it was yeah. just like overwhelming yeah. yeah that sounds like a lot um mm -hmm. especially like if you're not somebody who's accustomed to the paranormal i don't know if you had a lot of experiences before i did but, yeah. that's the thing i did and I continued to, but this was the most active I've ever been around. Like if anyone was ever wanting to do a seance or like something like that, like that would be the house because yeah, <laughs> the, the activity was just off the wall. It was like constant. It never stopped. It was just endless. But the longer you were there, the more intense it became. Mm -hmm. you know yeah. and i could say well you know maybe it was something trying to reach out no it felt very malicious it did not feel like something reaching for help or wanting to send a message no it felt like it just wanted to cause chaos mm -hmm. yeah because i've i've been around like spirits that are just lost and the energy is totally different. This was just fear seeking. Yeah, that sounds pretty terrifying. Wow. <laughs> Chris, do you have anything to add? Um, where was this Airbnb at? This was in Davenport, Florida. Oh, okay, in Florida. Do you know if it's still like up for to rent or whatever? Guess what? I've tried looking it up. I cannot find it. Wow. I tried so hard because I wanted to search the reviews. And uh, my husband's cousin, the one that booked it, she and I both were like, let's find this place. We've got there's got to be other people who experience this stuff. She couldn't even find it in her own history. And she's the one who booked it. It was gone. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah, like, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. It was not there anymore. It was, it, yeah. I wish that I could give you an address because I want, I want to go back to that place too. Just like, out of curiosity. And nope, cannot relocate it. Mm -hmm. You don't think you could find it like on Google Maps or something if you kind of, you know, to see if you remember more or less where it is? I could do my best just based off of like what it looked like from the outside for me to tell you like, oh, I remember the address. No, I don't remember the address. I remember what it looked like. It didn't look scary at all. Oh. Um, it looked like a modern, like just your everyday, like, Airbnb it was like three or four bedrooms, like one story, couple bath, a little pool in the back with a patio. Like it was nothing over the top. It wasn't anything that like, like where Melissa was saying like, oh, it was built in like 19, I can't remember what she said, but I'm just going to say like 1918 or something. No, like. <laughs> I don't know yeah, it would, what this it would place be was really built interesting. On. Yeah, it would be it would be cool if you could find it and like go look in county records or something. That's what we used to do uh back when I ghost hunted. We would always try to look up county records and kind of, you know, get a little bit of history on it um, and just see if we could figure out who owned it or if there's any news articles linked to it. If you ever come across it again and you get like an update, you'll have to come and tell us what oh, you've yeah. discovered. Oh yeah, no, we tried. I mean, I have some video like footage in my phone where we were just kind of like 
looking around and stuff like that before we knew the extent of the house of what was going to happen that later on that night but it's just inside the house like i don't have anything on the outside where i can go through the video and say like oh well there's the address you know um yeah. no it's just inside and no i i'll try i mean i can try but <laughs> Yeah, it, it would be hard in a place like Florida. I've lived in Florida before and there's houses on top of houses. So mm -hmm. It'd be difficult to relocate. Especially it if, in Davenport. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but if you ever do, if you ever figure out what happened there, something heinous <laughs> happened there. Obviously. <laughs> That's <something>, obvious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would love for someone to actually go do like the like ghost hunting there because, yeah. oh man, you guys would have great footage. Yeah, yeah, I would love to check out a place that's that haunted. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> well, we appreciate you so much. That was a terrifying story. I think everybody is thoroughly scared, like I said in the comments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I hope you'll stick around and listen to the rest of the show. I will do. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You too. Awesome. Are you guys entertained? <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Man. Airbnbs are I scary, saw... like, in general. Yeah, you know, I've never stayed at one. I've never uh, been to one. Hmm, I did, I did uh, in October when I went to California. Um, and I was freaked out because of that movie, Barbarian. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and not just that, but I think it's creepy just in general because you feel like Maybe there's like hidden cameras <laughs> or like the mirrors or two way mirrors or something, but for it to be yeah. haunted like that, it's crazy. Yeah, I, you know, that would be the best case scenario for me that it's haunted, but I don't think I could handle like the human monsters. Uh, that would be the part that I would want to deal with. I can handle the ghostly ones, but. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and uh, one thing I noticed a lot of people in the comments. Um, when she was talking about hot and cold spots, it is, I, I know that commonly, you know, amongst people who are interested in the paranormal, most people think that cold spots are the only paranormal manifestation of like temperature change. But I've actually on investigations, I've experienced really hot spots, really cold spots. Um, it's, it's actually really common. Uh, just, you know, anything that's like a significant temperature change is a lot of times, you know, has something to do with paranormal activity. Uh, unless you have, you know, obviously explainable circumstances. And then, you know, uh, Cat Mama says, hosts do put hidden cameras in. I know I've seen so many videos about stuff like that at this point. I don't think I could ever stay in an Airbnb. There's actually yeah. a couple, there's a couple on my street, like just a couple houses down, there's Airbnbs. Um, but yeah, never stayed in one. So I think we have a person. Everybody tap the screen. Oh, we did have a person. They disappeared. Uh, tap the screen. Send some hearts. More hearts equals more people equals more ghost stories. I want to definitely get some more people up to tell some ghost stories. If you have a paranormal story, it can be about any of these topics. It doesn't have to be paranormal. It can just be creepy in general. Feel free to hop in the box. Come up. Tell us a story. Um, it was Cupcake. cupcake. Yeah. Yeah. Um, keep getting the question about skinwalkers. I don't. I don't talk about skinwalkers. I feel like it's not my place to talk about those. I don't have an opinion on them. The only, the closest thing I talk to is like, uh, or talk about in regard to that is like Skinwalker Ranch, just because that's kind of a bastardization of the word, unfortunately, but. Uh, Skidwalker Ranch was a pretty interesting place. Did you ever Google that, Chris? I know we were talking about it at one point on a stream. Um, you know what? I haven't really looked into it. I, I know a little bit about it, um, but no, for some reason, I never got like deep into it. It's interesting. It's an interesting story. Um, I don't know what happened there. I don't know if anybody ever really will. Do you believe in shadow people? Yeah, I've seen a shadow person. Uh, and we always have shadow people stories. Just about every stream, we get somebody on that's had an encounter with a shadow person or a hat man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or something, 
Yeah, something of that nature. They seem to be pretty common in the paranormal world. Hmm. Is Cupcake not going to uh, jump on? I don't know. She had a glitch story. I wanted to hear it. Yeah, Cupcake, hop in the box. Come up, tell us a story. Oh, you don't have Bluetooth? Oh. Time to break out the old wired headbutt or headphones, earbuds, whatever. Break out some the kind you plug in. I miss those. I hate these little things. But the cool thing is, is I can like walk to the coffee pot and keep listening to everything. I don't miss anything, but they keep popping out of my ears. <laughs> I hate it. Ashley, you better come up here because you told me one time you were going to <laughs> and you never did. Interesting. Does Ashley have a story? Come on, Ashley. It's your turn. Get up here and tell us your spooky story. Jeffrey, I know you're going to come up here and blow our socks off with some <laughs> wild and crazy stuff. Jeffrey is, in case you guys don't know, Jeffrey is an OG paranormal, uh, paranormally correct uh, Boo Crew member. He has been around for a very long time, and uh, we've had some good times together on streams. Mm, you just joined. Oh, I think we might be talking to, yeah, we're talking to a different Ashley. We've got multiple Ashleys, Chris. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about the one with the sunflowers. She's been here uh, before a few times. Okay, so she's she's taking a, a breather from work, so. Yeah, so uh, quick story while we wait, um, unless, Chris, do you want to tell one of your stories? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you, you go for it. No? So uh, which one do I want to tell? So like cold and hot spots, I think it's pretty interesting. One of the uh, team members on my first paranormal team a lot of times when we didn't have an investigation lined up, but we wanted to do something on a weekend, we would get together at his apartment and investigate because it was very active. Allegedly, I don't know, it's still debatable, but uh, that was probably, probably the first time I ever experienced like hot spots, you know, in regards to like paranormal activity. Um, we had one of those, uh, what are those temperature gun things? You point the little laser gun and it picks up the temperature, whatever that thing's called. I don't know. Yeah. Thermometer of some sort. Yeah. So we had one of those and we were in, doing like an EVP session one night. And all of a sudden, like where I was sitting, there was all this heat all over me. Just like this weird heat that felt like nonsensical it's like why why am i hot all of a sudden why do i feel heat but it wasn't like i was hot it was like i could feel heat coming off something else it was a weird sensation and so i got the little temperature thing and there was like a massive shift of temperature all around me and so since we were doing the evp session i jumped in and i was like is that you heating up the place where i'm sitting like you know are you close to me or something and got you know yes a few times to several variations of the question. And I was like, oh, this is weird. Uh, whatever it is, it's in his apartment. It's like, I can kind of feel heat coming off of it. But um, cold spots probably are more, more frequent to the average uh, paranormal enthusiast. Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing, warm, warm spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that was always part of what we would do at the beginning of an investigation. We would go around and like kind of if just note whether or not there were temperature shifts initially before we started, because it was so common to see temperature changes during an investigation. We would go around and do like reference photos, which basically we get pictures of the entire location. And that way we had something for reference in case we picked up an anomaly 
like because uh, we we used a lot of infrared cameras back when Sony actually made real military grade infrared cameras, which they don't nobody does anymore. You can't get that technology anymore, yeah. which is very sad and depressing because that was awesome. But um, so we would do like reference pictures. We would do like uh, EMF readings to see if there were any fluctuations. Um, and it's funny because we did an investigation at this old house one time and the woman that owned the house, she, she kept telling us like the craziest stuff. Like, I can't even tell you on this live, this, some of the stuff that she was saying was so crazy. And it turned out her entire house was like a Faraday cage. It was just like the wiring in the house was so bad that the EMFs were affecting everybody in the house. It was causing drowsiness, headaches, um, possibly hallucinations. Her house wasn't haunted. Hmm. It was the wiring in the walls. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I've heard of that. Before. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, also when I investigated at the Paramount theater in Ashland, Kentucky, up in the projector room, up at the top of the theater, same thing the wiring was so old and so bad that everybody on my team and i had probably like 20 people because it was a hosted ghost hunt or whatever at some point i was like do you guys feel weird like is it you know it doesn't feel right up here let's just leave and everybody you know they wanted to leave too because it was just you could feel it you could feel the emfs making you feel icky all over yeah yeah, most things can be explained. Um, I always try to find like a scientific explanation for that. But you know what? We have a friend who comes on the stream just about every night uh, named Chief, and he's been telling me to stop being so scientific. Not in not in so many words, but um, <laughs> he he always reminds me that scientific explanations don't always have to be the explanation you go with. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, a lot of times, you know. There are explanations. That's always good to look for them. Guest box is open, guys. If you guys want to hop in, tell a paranormal story. It can be about ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, Glitch in the Matrix. Whatever you got, we want to hear it. Tell us your spookiest story. In the meantime, everybody tap the screen, please. Send some hearts. More hearts equals more people equals more scary stories. You have one. Okay, we'll hop up here and tell us. We would love to hear. Hmm. I need to hear more from Otherwise, Will. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, don't don't feel pressured. Uh you know, if you feel like hopping on, that's fine. If you don't, don't worry about it. It's okay. Hopefully it's not the stream that would make you feel anxious. Because like I said earlier, we just get up here and goof off and have a good time. So, you, you know, you don't have to feel nervous about it. But um, Plus, you could just leave if you, like, <laughs> weren't feeling it. You yeah. Just... <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I tell myself. If I feel anxious about something, I can always just leave. I could just get up and walk out. <laughs> I'll just it block everybody. Than... Yeah. <laughs> All right. We got a spooky story. I'm excited. Yo. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. You can hear me, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I don't know if you guys remember me. I told you two stories a while ago. And then I saw you guys were live and I was like, oh, I told them I would tell them a story from my childhood that I thought was really strange. And it's kind of different than like most things you'll ever hear. Because um, before I told you about the the like possessed lady and then my friend who was in college and like the thing that was like the audio we picked up in our basement. I don't know if you remember that. I do remember. I remember now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I had one one last story. There's uh, there's only three stories that have really ever happened in my life. Like I've heard lots of stories, but those are the only three that have actually really affected me. This one's not like I don't even know how to explain this one. And I don't I've only told this story like to a couple friends because it's it's kind of weird. And I still don't know if it was real, like as far as like I, I don't know what to make out of it, if it was paranormal or not. 
But uh, when I was 13, um, I'm in my 30s now, I was living in a, I was living with my mom, she's a single mother, and we lived in a really poor part of town. And just to give you like some, we don't live in a big, big city, but we live in a decently sized city. And next door to us on our left was like a prostitute and to the right of us were like drug dealers, right? So we lived in a crummy part of town. Um, but uh, that that comes into context with this. So uh, my mom, uh, she's a great mom, but we were we would sit on the front porch a lot of times, even though it was a bad neighborhood because it was nice out in the summer. And one summer we're sitting out on the porch and she's smoking a cigarette. I'm just kind of hanging out there and we would sit out there and talk a lot. And it was a beautiful day out. It was like, you know, typical summer day, no cloud in the sky. We live in the Midwest, so um, completely blue skies. And uh, it was probably like, I don't know, 75 degrees. Um, the reason why I'm saying this is like, I remembered it for a reason. But so um, this limo pulls up in front of our house um, and parks on the street like right in front of our house. And we're like, what is this? And it wasn't like a brand new limo. And it was like kind of, I don't know if you guys know what some of those shorter limos are. They don't have like, uh, they're not the really stretch limos. They're just like, they have like two extra doors in the back. Um, and so this driver gets out of the driver's side and he's dressed with like a driver's cap and like a driver's suit on. And he's like 90 years old. And me and my mom like literally said, what is go? What is this about? And we didn't think they were coming to our house, but they were right in front of our house. We're like, it must be a house across the street or something, you know? Um, and the driver goes around to the passenger side door in the back and he opens it. And this like seven foot tall man gets out of the, the car and he is like, um, he looks Nigerian. Like he looks like a Nigerian guy in a suit. He's bald, he, you know, and he is like seven feet tall, no joke. And um, so the driver closes the door and stands next to the car. And the Nigerian guy who's wearing the suit and like seven feet tall walks right up to our porch. And we're like, hello? And he's like, he had a really deep voice and I'm not gonna even try and do his accent, but he had a really deep accent too. And uh, he said, hey, I've come to speak with you. And, uh, we were like, okay. And it was, my mom was like, is there anything we can help you with? And we're both kind of awe shocked because this like 90 year old guy, <laughs> this seven foot tall Nigerian dude who's just like dressed to the nines, you know, and it's just not what happens in our neighborhood, right? So he, he says, you know, I, I've come to talk to you. And we're like, well, what do you want to talk to us about? And he said, well, um, I'm Jesus and I've come to speak with my followers. And we're like, oh, like you, my mom and me got to look at each other like, oh, crazy's here. Cause you know, we've seen some crazy stuff before, but nothing like on this level. Um, and so he's like, I've come to talk to you. I just wanted to see how you guys were doing. And so he, he comes, you know, he like kind of comes up like a couple stairs, like he's, so we're sitting on the porch and he's just kind of staying there. He didn't, he didn't feel threatening at all. It just was weird. And so, um, you know, I, he was like, he asked us, you know, he's like, what, uh, um, how's your day going? Stuff like that. And then we're like, so you, you think you're like Jesus Christ? And he's like, yeah, I'm Jesus Christ. And, uh, so me and my mom were both believers, but we, you know, uh, we're like, we started, like, I started mostly talking to him. My mom didn't really talk to him much, but I started like quizzing him on the Bible. And he gave me these very like, um, uh, responses that someone would give you kind of like biblical responses, but they were like circular. So there was no like definitive answer. Cause I was like trying to get him to like slip up on something, you know? And, um, and I'm 13, so I don't know like a whole lot about the Bible, but I knew enough. And so I'm like giving him these things and he's keeps talking to us. Um, and he's given me these very like, um, circular answers and biblical answers kind of like, but not like, I don't know. He, he, he didn't seem to want to talk about it too much. He was like, mostly I just came to check on you and you're, and we're like, well, do you want like, like, are you looking for money or what do you want? He's like, no, I just wanted to see how you were doing and wanted to come talk to my followers. And I don't remember everything about the conversation because I'm, I'm 36 now and I was 13, but basically I, I, this is like the part that that's kind of the weirdest part is, um, I was, you know, kind of quizzing him and I said, well, like if you're God, then like perform a miracle for me, you know, like, or you could just be some crazy guy who knows. Right. 
And um, he was like, he's like, I'll make you a deal. He said, uh, five minutes after I leave, it's going to start downpouring rain. And I said, deal. And then he shook my hand and my mom's hand. And he's like, it was really good to see you guys. And then he got into his car. The old man closed the door, went around, and they just pulled off. Me and mom looked at each other and were like, that was the craziest thing ever. And no shit, not a cloud in the sky. Five minutes later, it is downpouring. Um, and uh, I've just never known what to make of that story. Because, uh, I mean, legitimately, when I tell you it was like, blue skies not a single cloud i don't know if this guy was just going around messing with people um but uh i i talked later on in the years i, I talked to a couple of buddies because um, i work in law enforcement and I, I asked some some veterans i'm like have you ever heard of any stories like this has this guy ever popped up have you ever heard anything around this area and they're like no and usually when stuff like this happens like it's like you know someone trying to scam or do something or something weird and there's some kind of history about it but no one's ever heard about this guy um and so that's the story i know it's not that crazy but it's just a weird <laughs> fascinating story that like yeah i just don't know what to make of it i don't know what your guys' thoughts are on it yeah that's a weird one so i would say and maybe he had a tv in his limo and the weather channel you know yeah no, no. <laughs> that totally could be that totally could be but it was just um it was just something that's like you just don't, it, it's just something so off that you don't normally um, come across, right? Like, and, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, and, uh, you know, I got in a bad accident uh, two years later. And uh, um, it was funny because, like, uh, I had a pocket Bible in my leg and a spear went all the way through it um, to almost the last chapter because um, I was mowing and my brakes went out on me and I, I hit this wood porch with like a big, big lawnmower and this wood beam went through and it took like six guys to pull me out of there, but it saved my leg. And like, I'm not saying I'm super religious or anything, but there's just been a lot of coincidences like that in my life where I'm like, eh, there might be something to this. <laughs> so, but yeah, I figure I'd tell you yeah. guys that story and um, yeah, see what you guys thought if uh, he was just some guy messing with people or if there was something spiritual to it i don't know yeah my guess is he was probably just having fun with everybody but uh it's funny that you mentioned that about you know your accident uh not that the accident's funny but uh i, I knew somebody years ago somebody I went to high school with they had like a grandparent or something like a great grandparent who was in a war i'm not sure which one um but he got pew pewed and he had his canteen in just the right spot. So the bullet hit it and the canteen saved him. Little metal canteen. Uh, it's crazy how stuff like that happens sometimes. But uh, yeah, it's, it's the the youth pastors actually was I was mowing a, a church property. And that's the reason I had the Bible on me. And the youth pastor pulled me out and he thought it was like a miracle. <laughs> he was like, oh, my God, like the Bible saved your leg because it went right through my leg, probably hit my femoral artery and, and messed me up. And I see all sorts of accidents in law enforcement now. And it was just like crazy that that little Bible saved my life. But and that could be obviously coincidence, you know, but I've just had lots yeah, of little definitely. weird things like that happen in my life. And I'm like, man, like either I have a really kick ass guardian angel or I'm super lucky. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah. Well, that's a cool, interesting story, and uh, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Thanks that's for letting me very tell odd. It. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> All righty. Have a good evening. You too. Bye. 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 Yeah, I think those uh, those kinds of stories are pretty neat. It's too bad I didn't have something canteen or a bubble that time I got hit by a Ford Bronco. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. <laughs> hey, um, that reminds me. Did you ever hear the story about some guy that was possessed or something? And like wherever he would be, it'd be raining, even if he was like in indoors. No, it no? rained indoors. Yeah, like I saw it on TV. I forgot what show it was. I'll have to like look it up and send it to you. But I, I mean, I don't know if I believe that one. <laughs> but it was really interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's a wild one. That's definitely wild. Oh crap hit the wrong button all right we got we got daddy come on up daddy <laughs> what's up daddy <laughs> chill daddy 
if you ever seen that video. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <my> goodness. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? Oh, not bad. Um, but yeah, this is kind of a story of like, so I lived in Bellingham, Washington for a while, um, up north, kind of towards the border. Um, this was like, I don't know, just recently, actually. Um, I feel like the property was very haunted, to be honest with you that I was staying at. I don't know how true or false that actually is, but like a lot of stuff went on, right? And so I'm two months uh, sober from smoking and this has part of to do with the story. Um, uh, the property was like, there was basically Connex boxes, like where I park, like basically shipping containers where they would store stuff, right? And, um, I was having stuff happen to me in the house, like unexplainable stuff, like my stuff would go missing and like, like simple stuff, like my keys, my phone, wallet, any of that, like normal stuff, like a person would have on you on a regular basis. Right. And there was this one day in particular where, um, it was like day five into being sober. Right. And, um, cause my goal in 2024 was to be a hundred percent substance free. And thankfully I am now. Um, but I was out in my car meditating. Um, I don't know if y'all like listen to like vibration music on YouTube or anything like that to help calm me down. But that was one of the things my friends suggested. And I did a, like, a. Uh, in like some native american culture and uh also christianity um do like candle lights and stuff like that right and i lit like a purple candle basically uh it had like a couple herbs on it uh basically like uh um it was thyme mugwort and one other one uh eucalyptus and i was burning the candle and i was playing the music at the same time meditating in my car um basically when i was meditating i had my visor um down and i could see myself in the mirror with my eyes closed basically and yeah, um, I noticed a evil presence around me and I was actually on a live with a friend while this was happening in one of these boxes. And he was like, what are you seeing, dude? And I'm like, basically, I looked in the mirror after I opened my eyes and I saw a dark sh hooded shadow figure behind me pacing back and forth basically looking like it wanted to beat the crap out of me and um i went out to well i stepped out of the car and yelled basically what the f and the neighbors came out to me and they're like what's wrong what's wrong what's wrong and i'm like i told them what i saw and they're like yeah something bad happened on this property we don't speak about that and yeah um there's actually a tiktok video that i posted like i don't know i'd say like a couple weeks prior to that i was complaining about being scratched in my bathroom and you could clearly hear audio of voices that weren't my kids saying he 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 catch and then you hear scratching on the door and i've been dealing with like stuff like this since i've been a little kid and, like you know i i don't know if it's because of pot or anything like that but like i was like basic basically a week into being sober because i was just like if i'm either in my head or stuff's actually happening to me and there's only one way to prove that, you know? 
And I was like, I, I'll get sober and prove it. And somebody like on live uh, commented on the video and they're just like, uh, nope. Nope. I heard that. You know? So it's just like, I don't know whether that property's haunted, but like I'm moved back home now. And I'm so glad I'm not there. Honestly. Like, yeah. So I don't know if people, because I know like people who have done like, harder drugs than that like see stuff like that but it's just like i was sober man you yeah know? yeah and like i was as sober as sober could be <laughs> like uh, i'm just like i'm so happy i'm out of there because i had open heart surgery as a kid too so i don't know i've had near-death experiences so like, I don't know if it's me having, like, one foot in the spirit realm and one foot in this realm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because of the near-death experiences. And it's, like, I don't know. Like, stuff keeps happening, though. Like, it doesn't matter, like, what place I'm at. It's, like, it's just me that it happens to. You know? Yeah. But other people witness it, and I'm just, like, Okay, it can't just be me, you know? So, I don't know what y'all make of that, but, you know, um, that's kind of my yeah, story. Yeah, I mean, you could just be sensitive to things, you know? A lot of people believe that they have uh, mediumship qualities and they're sensitive to activity and presences and... Uh, you know, you can attempt to develop those skills. There's, you know, all sorts of books and mentors and stuff like that out there if you ever decide that you want to look into maybe you have some mediumship abilities right be, yeah that would be what i would do right yeah man and um there's been a couple of incidences not just like that one um i don't know i lived in a house in mill creek washington where like before we moved there, there was like literally a note that was passed like down to us where like, hey, we did mess with X, Y, Z in the house, like Ouija board crap, you know, like letting us know like, hey, this ain't the best place like to be around, you know, and um, they didn't tell us exactly what went down. But, like, there's this one night in particular where, like, my my folks used to go on vacation a lot and, like, used to trust me with the, watching the house for, like, a week, basically. And um, my room was in the top back of the house, basically. And there's this one room where it was just, like, a screw-off room, right? And they stored, like, anything and everything in there. And, um, one night in particular, it was like midway through the week and they were almost back home and yeah, I had my cat with me and then, uh, my dog was downstairs and I audibly hear like knock, knock, knock. And I'm just like, that ain't good. I know what three knocks means. You know, like, that's never a good sign, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> my dumb self decides, hey, I'm going to test, I'm going to test you. I'm going to knock back. And I did answer. <laughs> it, it knocked back again. I, I went down and got my dog and I was just like, nope, nope. And the comment asked down there, like, what does three knocks mean? Um, usually it's a, at least in the Christian community, it means like, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you know, it's mocking it. So that in, means, in folklore, it means that there is an oncoming tragedy, like a death or something like an Appalachian oh, really? folklore. So, yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Cause that's interesting that you say that because like right after that, like yeah, a bunch of a bunch of death occurred like in my surrounding area. You know, like in our family, all that kind of crap, and it's just like, yeah, man. It's <laughs> like I've been dealing with this kind of crap my whole life, and like people think I'm like basically joking for attention, and I'm not. <laughs> you know, like. I don't know. I've never played the Ouija board myself. I won't touch that thing. I won't even be in the same room as somebody touching it. Like, no. Nah. Even a spear box. Like, I already know, like, that, like, opens up, like, doors to where, like, spirits can basically come through. And I'm just like, uh, I don't want nothing to do with that, you know? So... But yeah. Yeah, um, we had a pretty good Ouija board story on here last night. We uh guy said he ended up burning it and it it did some cool stuff while it was burning, but uh Yeah, you never Yeah, I personally that. I've I've never been able to get a Ouija board to work myself, but I'm gonna keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't burn it, dude. That's a, that's a bad idea cuz um I I've heard the like so many bad stories of people burning it and it shows up in their house like the next day like completely unfazed anything and nah like you're supposed to basically like go in a forest like and basically bury it yeah i think that's what somebody in the comments last night was saying is like don't burn it bury it in the ground <laughs> yeah seriously though because like it keeps showing back up and if it keeps showing back up like that that's not a good sign you know so but yeah well, it um, sounds like you have some mediumship abilities you should really look into that you know look trust into, me like some stuff about yeah you know. yeah i've thought about that like a lot because like yeah i have stories for days it's not just like one or two it's like 50 plus in all honesty it's just like i've tried to block it out because i'm just like the more energy you give it like you know what i mean like especially if it's negative you know like it tends to mess with you more you know and that's why like a lot of people like who go through these kind of encounters like d are like all hush hush about it you know because they don't want to give it energy or power like for instance like the three knocking thing like happened again at uh my ex's house when um i used to stay out sadly in a, like a livable shipping container and when i was out with my cats um yeah they were freaking out i was like why are you guys freaking out and then i i heard the three knocks again and i was like did you forget the last time bro like what happened to you and i'm just like apparently because i opened up the door this time and nothing was there dude and <laughs> That's when all the creepy crap started happening. And I'm just like, I yeah, I don't like that crap. Like, yeah, I probably do have some, like you say, some kind of medium abilities or whatever. But it's just like, part of me has been too scared to kind of even explore that, you know? Yeah, well, you know, not that anybody's really going to listen to me on this topic, but I always feel like the paranormal shouldn't be scary. You know, obviously, if it feels malicious to you, then go with your gut. But I personally don't believe that that it's scary. And I right. think if we can get past the scariness of it or the creepy factor, I think that's when we can really start to learn about it and figure it out, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always a proponent for... Um, if you can learn more about it, definitely do it. But uh, we really appreciate you coming up and sharing your story with us. And yeah. uh, look into look into some mediumship stuff. And uh, there's lots of mentors out there. You get to look on the internet. You can find people and books and resources. But uh, you may have a gift, and you may have Casper the Friendly Ghost trying to tell you a story. Right. And, uh, 
you you never know <laughs> yeah. but we appreciate you thanks for coming yeah. up thank you thanks have a good night all right we got a couple people chris you want to bring somebody up and i'm going to go release the kraken oh god yeah go for or, it. like whatever i don't yeah. know i was just trying to think of something cool i was just trying <laughs> Um, just really quick, uh, congratulations to that guy on his sobriety. Um, if you're still listening, uh, let me go ahead and <laughs> bring the, uh, the next guest up here. Uh, let me see. Um, hello. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, do you have a story for us? Okay. Well, I was going to tell her before she walked away. I'm in Kentucky also. I'm in, um, in McCrary County. Uh, Stearns, um, and probably until I was in my mid-30s, I wasn't the person that doubted you when you shared your paranormal experiences, but I would have had to see it for myself to really believe it, if that makes sense. Right. Um, I, I'm, I'm always open-minded, and, you know, my, my first experience, I had went with some friends uh, to, well, I, I worked with her. She was my friend, her and her husband. Um, her mother-in-law had a house uh, that they used just to go to get away on weekends out in the middle of the country. And um, we went up there for the weekend and we were closing the house up. We had cooked and just spent the day and, you know, sat around and visited. And when we got ready to leave, um, I went upstairs. I was tasked with going upstairs and shutting the windows since it was closed up most of the time when they weren't there. She'd open the windows. And so I, I get to the top of the stairs and um, walked past a bathroom and just felt this cold chill run through my body. And I didn't see anything, didn't hear anything, <clears throat> but I felt the presence of an older woman. And so I just went back downstairs and she said, oh my God, <laughs> she said, have you seen her? <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> and uh, she just didn't tell me because she didn't want to freak me out, I guess, and said that there had been a couple that lived there. Um, they'd had a lot of, they'd seen a lot of activity there at the house as long as they'd had it. And um, an older lady had lived there and died and, and there were, but so that was my first experience and that's where I thought, okay, there's something to this. So I wasn't the doubter after that. And then later I see you're back. I'm glad you're back. I was going to tell you, and I don't know what your first name is. Sarah. Sarah. I okay. heard you. I've got my earbuds in. Oh, good. Yeah, I was okay. listening. Because I was just saying I'm in McCreary County and I don't know if you've ever been here. Mm -hmm. um, we have a train ride that goes into the national forest or the national, well, the national park. We've got both here in the county. And the train ride takes people to visit a rebuilt coal mining community. A lot of history here. And the depot where you go and ride the train uh, was built um, not too long after, uh, probably the thirties maybe. No, 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 back before that. Right after the turn of the century, the early 1900s. And over the years, it was different things. It was a, a freight depot. Uh, the, the depot sits right on the Norfolk Southern Main Line. And um, so at one point, it, was a, a, it wasn't a funeral home per se, but they would prepare the bodies and then the bodies would go to the churches or to people's homes for funerals. And um, like that's how they did it here back then. And I had a gift shop there for close to 25 years in that depot. And uh, I would hear what would sound like a shelf full of dishes fall and crash. Um, you know, I would, I would be working in my office, nobody else in the building because the train had gone out and the building would be virtually empty a lot of times. And I would just, I would just hear noises. But um, several people that worked for me and helped me in the store over the years, cousins, my niece, have seen people. Um, they've, I've got a really good picture that they caught of someone that looked like, uh, the image is pretty clear of someone that had like one of the old fashioned hats like the ladies used to wear back in the day. 
and even a park service ranger, the, the park service had their visitor center in our depot for about seven years. And the, the person that told the story that she had seen somebody walk past and never would speak to her, didn't look at her, he went into an area of the depot where there was, he had really no business being, so she just kind of followed him and, and never could find him. And he didn't have an exit. And she was one of the people that would never just say something if, you know, she, you have to know where she was no nonsense, a really good person. And so, you know, somebody like that, you, you don't, you, you could doubt a lot of people, but you wouldn't doubt her. And the same with my cousins and niece and other people. Um, a couple of girls had went in one morning to open and before I got there and we had a section of uh, merchandise. We had a lot of a big gift shop with a lot of different things. And we had a section that had a lot of uh, John Wayne collectibles and memorabilia. Um, the flat tin signs that you see people that, you know, there's people hang them on the wall, the decorative signs. It was it was off the shelf where it was had been hanging on, on a nail and it was sta standing on its own on the floor. And they said everything on that shelf looked like it had been pulled off and placed in the floor so that nothing was broken, nothing was on its side, like it had been done on purpose. And they had closed up the night before and opened the next morning, the two girls together. And I really, you know, I don't doubt that that happened. Um, but I think with me, I just feel like maybe these spirits know it would just finish me off if I ever saw something move. <laughs> I mean, I heard things, but I never <laughs> saw anything. So I think that would finish me off. But now that depot, um, over the years, has had a lot of activity. So, you know, maybe a good place. Where, where are you? What part of Kentucky? I'm in Lexington, okay. Kentucky. Okay, so we're a couple hours, maybe two hours south of you. You know where we are, the Big South Fort? Yeah. Time? Just south of Somerset, yeah. about 30 minutes. So, yeah. Anyway, I, I, think, I think maybe there's something to that, don't you? Do you think that maybe... It's like they know I don't want to see them, so they never show themselves. And maybe I've never been in a place that was so bad that I would see something. But um, but everybody around me, even my sister, who is, I mean, she is the biggest skeptic of, of, of them all. And she was partners with me in the store. And she even saw, a, you know, a stuffed animal come off the shelf and levitate and then hit the floor. Um, she's been, wow. she was in back in our storage room. And we used to sell quilted handbags and wallets and things. And we had um, like a storage box with the extra wallets. You know, we'd go back there and get those to restock our shelves out front. And she was back uh, putting up some stock and uh, was bent over. And a wallet hit her in the back of her head. And my cousin sat there and watched it, <laughs> watched it happen. So... She said she looked at me like she thought I'd hit her in the head with a wallet, but she said, no, I didn't catch it. <laughs> but anyway, I, I think that's uh, interesting. And I thought about the guy earlier talking about the, the person who said he was Jesus. And do you think maybe that, you know, we have crazy people walking around here today. You know, there's crazy people amongst us. Do that. Maybe they just stay crazy after they're dead. And maybe, maybe that's <laughs> what he encountered. You know, who, who knows? But yeah. <laughs> That's very possible. Yeah, it's crossed my mind. But, okay, I'll let somebody else talk, but I wanted to share that with you. And if you ever uh, get a chance to come to Stearns, uh, the depot there in the Big South Fork Scenic Railway would be a good place. And we've got a museum. There's been activity all over our little town there. And we've had a lot of people. Um, there's been shootings and hangings, and I'm not sure what else right there in town. So, plus the fact yeah. that the depot was a, was a place where they prepared bodies. So. Yeah, I would love to investigate a place like that. Uh, that would be amazing. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, I'm not sure at this point, um, but you could call probably call the railway and speak to someone there in their ticket office. I closed my store back when COVID hit the streets and work from home now. So, and luckily I live by myself on the side of a mountain and I don't think I have any um, G-H-O-S-T-S. <laughs> <laughs> Again, well, I don't know. It's Kentucky. Everything's haunted it here. It is, yeah. Well, but here we're, I'm, I'm probably, uh, my, I probably, I'm probably sitting less than a mile from the national park, and mm -hmm. um, 
people still find arrowheads and you know there was a lot of a lot of indians here the cherokee years ago mm -hmm. so that probably wasn't politically correct but that's what i've always called them and that's what the native americans so but uh, i'll well, go thank you for coming up we oh, we really appreciate it well you're welcome i enjoy watching you when i get a chance so thank you for for sharing every everything with us and and letting people come on and, and tell their stories that's really nice of you so you have a good yeah. night and everybody watching i'll stay a little while longer and uh uh, and I'll I'll see you again soon. <laughs> Alrighty, sounds good. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, to investigate a place like that, that would be that would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> she was really nice. I loved her. Yeah. Rep Arena. Oh. Hey Chief. Hey, young lady, how are you? I'm all right. How are you? Oh, I'm doing all right. Just out and about tonight. Kind of just came in after a little dinner. Now I'm just seeing what's up. Um, yeah, that's awesome. interesting. You know, down in that southern country, there's a lot of, uh, we talked about that today, about how there's still a lot of little areas down there that prescribe to you guys' old ways. You know, your old medicine, your old magic, and all that stuff. Hexes and hanks and whatnot and all that stuff. I didn't even know what widow shiz was until one of my friends from the south told me what that was. I said, what the heck are you talking about? And he started walking with the shiz and said, don't do this too often. And I was like, okay. And so, yeah, I just, I was just, it's interesting to see that. I, I like hearing about down the south and your people's uh, different magic and stuff like down there. Because you guys, you got some, still got powerful ones down there, you know? Louisiana's yeah. got a whole mess load of them voodoo folk down there. That's kind of interesting life, you know. Oh I, yeah, definitely. I, res I respect other 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 countries' magic in the way they uh, they live, you know. <clears throat> yeah. But we don't live. We we can't live like we want to because of uh, there's people who are afraid of this. I mean, we could do this right now. We could we could sit here and talk about it in this room, but the minute we get out of this room, people will call us kooks, weirdos, and freaks and whatnot, you know. But we we I think we do need a place to sit and put our minds together and talk about the places of, of power still alive around here, because there's still yeah. powers of power places in the United States. Um, you know they make they make the old country sound like it's the only place left over with old magic but we haven't explored everything here and my people and my people have tried, had a lot of powerful places here and we we never really well we didn't have any writing to put it down in but we used to have stories about these places. and so i'm sitting here and i was thinking about one of the stories about about him that should not be named um Growing up in my hometown, there it, it's it's an interesting little place. It's got it's good, it's good, it's bad. But the bad sometimes shows up in the weirdest ways. Um, we've been, we he's been known to walk through our streets like ain't nothing, like it's just a normal everyday life, just a normal walk. Uh, case in point, my my cousins and all of these kids we used to congregate at the um, theater on Friday night and watch, get ready to watch a movie. Well, it was hot. I mean, it was hot for that day. It was midsummer. Must have been about 100, 109 degrees, which it doesn't get very hot in Montana, but when it does, it does. So, you know, it's hot. And we're, so we're all dressed for the weather. And <clears throat> where the theater was, there was a bar right next to it. And it was the old VFW is what it was. And so we, you know, you would see people coming and going out of that bar, some old veterans and whatnot. Well, one day, just out of just the weirdness, you just get this like, like the hackles in the back of your neck raise up. And, you know, you know, something's up. It's, you know, you feel like the lightning and thunderstorms are coming around. You could feel it. Well, that's what the same feeling was. It was, it was, it was really just kind of, like something had taken a hold of you and wrapped you in cotton. So we're sitting, you know, everybody's kind of antsy looking around and wonder what the heck's going on. 
an old son, these kids, whoever he was, as he was walking down the, down the street, people would would part. No one wanted to touch him. No one wanted, I mean, we'd look at him, but we wouldn't want to touch him because what was so interesting about him is he was wearing a long coat in the middle of the summer, and it was hot. And we were all kind of wondering, what the heck's going on? What's, is this fella all right? <clears throat> so they were all kind of wondering, well, we'll even be, you know. But my cousins being the way they are, they're a couple of childer heads. They have to raise hell of folk. And so they were they were curious about this fella. So they walk up to him. And, they, and uh, as they were saying that, you know, they were like, hey, dude, you all right? You know, you, you nuts? You know, it's hot, right? Kids being kids, you know, they just, when they get, get one-minded, they start doing stuff like that. Well, they were harassing this fella, and he, you know, he, it, it just seemed weird that, you know, he just took it and laughed a little bit when they were doing it. Finally, as they were, as he was going to turn around, one of my cousins was going to lay hands on him. And at, just before he laid hands on him, he turns around. And he looks at him, but he looks at that my cousin. He says, "You don't want to do that, son." And you know, be, being young and thinking you're vulnerable, he said, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess you up." Well, he was gonna start punching this fellow out, and just like that, this this dude lifted his hand, and when he lifted his hand, it was like. Like when you stop traffic, it's the same kind of movement as that. <clears throat> well, my other cousin was going to back him up. And as they were both running, rushing this fella, after he raised his hand, they said it felt like somebody took a big old, like just grabbed him. And he pushed. And you could see him as he was moving his hand. He was pushing these, these boys. These guys were pretty big. My cousins were big boys. And as they were pushing him, as he was moving his hand, it looked like they were crumpling. Like someone was taking a can and squishing that can. And everybody said they just look at it and they just freaked out because they were like, what the, you know, what the heck? Well, after he got him on the ground, he said, he let you come over and he told him, he says, I told you, you don't want to mess with me. And as I said that, he turned around and he headed down that street. He'd come in. But as he was moving along, people said they started noticing that, that smell of, of like somebody. There was a glitch. Try again in a few seconds. Like somebody had um, gassed, you know, farted, I guess as you'd say, you know, that smell, that sulfur smell. And they said that smell was heavy in that area. And was, one kid swore up and down, as he said, as that, old, that dude was going around the corner out from underneath that coat. There was something like a tail coming out from underneath it. Well, everybody was, was you know, they, they, they weren't afraid of him. They were just like, well, what the heck? So they were gonna chase him down. And as they went around the corner, he wasn't there. No one seen him run anywhere else. And so they never found him. So it was kind of like, ah. Oh. Well, they walk up to my cousins and my cousins looked like they'd been beat the heck out of him. Because whatever he did to him, he just they just laid there. In pain, they said. It was like the most worst pain they've ever been in their life. <clears throat> and so when they got up, it was just, whatever it did, it really haunted the heck out of them. They ended up having to go to the Catholic Church. And the, the priest looked at him and said, you've been touched. So you guys, we need, to, we need to clean you up. We need to cleanse you out. And so he did it. He cleaned them out. And my cousins, you know, they, 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 one cousin just, he just left this world not too long ago, but they would, they have a hard time. They've always, after that, they've had a hard time living life. They've always been like, like they, they can never settle down. And just when you think they can, they, something comes up. So they, they you know, and, and everybody thought. They'd been touched by him. And, <clears throat> and that town's always had that problem with him walking around there. He just walks around like he owns the place. There's always, you know, and, and 
it's just it's scary at most, you know. Some of the old medicine men, they, they, they don't know how to protect us, but some of these young folk, they have to have that wild lifestyle, you know, drugs, alcohol, all that other stuff. And so they bring him in. And there's all there's there's been there's been hauntings of him in that area. Just like my cousin's got the same thing. Um, one case in point, another story about that is um, there's a oh I can't remember where it's at. Oh, it's down. It, they call it that. Now this is gonna sound pretty pretty crude, but they call it stink finger. Stink finger coolie. It's where all the where all the kids go down to. Well, you know. Well, as they they say as they were down there. One time, this couple was down there and they were making out, and they said they were they were just making out. And all of a sudden, they heard somebody. You know, they heard somebody walking around back there. And they, were, they didn't they didn't think nothing of it. They just thought somebody was just back there with their girlfriend. A couple making out. Well, he did, you know, they just they continued on, they continued on. And just as they were, you know, they were getting, they, they figured something was wrong because it got quiet. And they said they opened up that, they rolled their windows down, they were looking around for it, for whoever that was. And just, they said, just as they said that, they started looking around. They come around and there was this person. But he, ain't, he didn't look just normal. He just, he, he had this, his eyes were all sallow looking and his, his skin was, it was, it was dark. Like not like, like beyond our skin tone. Oh, and they, they took off. They headed home after that. And that place down there has always had a little bit of trouble with him walking down. There. But there's, there, there's been medicine men that have come to that town and they said this town is, it's, it's haunted. Something evil's walking these streets. And with the one person that said, one person said, "Well, I'll be back. I'm going to bring a group of my people down here. We're going to get. We're going to find it." And that was years ago. They ain't never come back. So I don't know what happened. But yeah, that's he walks around there. I mean, we our our people walk both worlds. They walk the Christian and the and and the, our traditional ways. Yeah. So did the group of people, did they go missing, like in the woods or something? No, no. Um, what happened is that they were, it was just that, no, it was just a couple out there. They were, they were just, this. they were, this was like Lover's Lane, I guess it would be another way of saying. They were out there on their own, and then that, it wasn't two people, it was that one person, and it, it was him. It okay, was, I thought you said that the a group said that they were going to go look for him. Uh, oh, no. Oh, you're something. talking about the other group. Oh, the one at this show house is where it was at. Yeah, they come around that corner and he was gone. And they and they were asking people, hey, did you see this guy come around here? And they mm -hmm. said no one showed up. No one come around. So just like that, he disappeared. They never found, you know, they never found out how he got away. I mean, it's, it's kind of not hard miss a fellow in a long dark coat you know running around and stuff yeah <laughs> so i mean that's he, he you know he touched my cousins my cousins ain't never quite been the same since and like i said one of them just left not too long ago drake himself to death yeah that's terrible i hate yeah. to hear that yeah it's just you know and he that's what he does he he, he affects you when he affects you if you don't fight it, you're gonna. It's a downhill battle for you, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm, I I just wanted to sit, stop off, and tell you a quick story, and just want to listen to y'all. You guys have some. Sometimes I like to just sit here and listen to you guys and talk about, like I said, your 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 areas of life. And for me. You know, Native American cultures, it's just my life, you know. But I do like to like to hear about you guys as hill folk down in southern, the, south, the south. Yeah. They, they, came, they came over from the other country, and they brought their people, they brought their holy with them. 
their medicine, their magic, whatever. You know, and I was always, I was always interested in their, uh, their hexes. I yeah. never did <laughs> what it was, but I started looking it up and there's some mighty powerful magic in them hexes. Yeah, right. yeah that's well, I'm definitely gonna, the truth. I'm going to get off and let somebody else get up on in here. All righty, Chief. Well, we always appreciate you. We love your stories. We're glad you stopped in for a little bit. Always nice to have Chief pop in and tell us a spooky story. Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Oh my, we have a bunch of people and it's getting late. Uh, just going to start at the top of the list here. Hey, Lodge hey, Tales. <laughs> hey, Chief, I'm going to uh, add on to some of your stories there. Um, well, before I start, here was a guy in a comment saying, you know, telling ghost stories is like whistling at night. You're calling them out. You know, there's some truth to that. And, um, I would just say if you're telling ghost stories or you're listening to them at home or something's, you know, you might be feeling some way. What we do is we just smudge off and we ask for protection. I mean, I I have protection in my house. And so I'm aware of that. So that guy that's kind of concerned about that. Yeah, you're right. I wouldn't argue with you that that can happen. You can call them up and you can start getting bothered. So I just kind of forewarn everybody that that's not an off the wall statement, in my opinion. But um, just so you know, I kind of, I got myself, um, you know, I got protection around my house and stuff. So, but anyways, this man that he talks about is real. Um, that, that goes around that town, that, that reservation town. So I have a friend that was a cop. Um, I actually searched, geez, we go way back, all the way to the boarding school days. And uh, his dad was a cop and. The cops lived down in the government housing by the boarding school, and he'd come over and he'd always play with us there all the time. He's about two years younger than me, but we all played as kids. And later on in life, uh, I had left to the Marine Corps and did my four years, two deployments there as an infantryman. Left and went to the Army up in Alaska. I went from Southern California to the to the Arctic Infantry up in Fairbanks, Alaska. What, what, what a culture shock, I tell you what. But... So I'm there one day getting back from this training mission and the guy on duty says, hey, there's another guy that come from, what'd you say you were, Blackfeet? I said, yeah. He said, he's, he's in that day room, he's, he's on the phone. So I went down there and I opened that door and I tap him on the shoulder. He spins around, jumps up at attention. I said, oh, relax with that, brother. You, you, uh, you know, I said his name. He says, yeah, yeah. I said, you remember me? He says, oh yeah, and he said my name. We, <laughs> we shook hands, and anyways, we served together. It was kind of an odd thing that we got in the same unit. After he left the military, he became a cop, and this is his story about that man that walks around that town. So it was one of the nights where there was a, uh, I want to say there was a prom going on out in Hart Butte. I want to say it was prom night, or it could have been around Browning too. So there was a lot of cars up and down, people drinking, you know, and cops are pretty busy getting, responding to a lot of calls. Okay, there was this motor vehicle accident out of town some, somewhat far, and well, not too far out of town, but the person that was in there, it, it ended up being a fatality. <clears throat> he died on the way to the hospital. The higher patrolman that was there told him, he says, go, go to that... Uh, town pump and ask him for their security cam footage we'll see what he's talking about because he was he was asking hey where's where's that guy that was with me where's that guy that was with me that's all I kept saying but he was hurt he was hurt bad he ended up passing away and so that's why they sent uh, my friend over to to go figure out who was with him and so they sneak up they drive up to the back side and they know the guy that was working there. There used to be this window on like the, the south side of it and they, they thought they'd just mess around and you know, they try to scare him, whatever. But they go in and talk to him. They they stared him at the window and they went in and talked to him and they said, Yeah, um, you need to look at that footage if you have it. He says, All right. He says, Well let, let me um let me pull it up. He says, Give me about forty five minutes or so and so they just went and kept patrolling. 
doing laps around town and then finally they, they drive back in because he calls and he says hey I, I got it ready for you so they come in and and they're looking at it and he says but man is that i just gotta show you guys something weird about that footage though they say all right you know because they gave him the description of the vehicle that was there that was left in the description of the guy they had him on camera coming into the store and everything like that but he says, yeah, we, we found the car, we found the guy, we got footage of him coming in here, going back out there, he was getting gas at the gas pump over there. He says, but you need to look at this instead. And there's a camera like kind of on top of the town pump that could see down to the, to the Bowsers. And there's a few up there and there's one position just so it could see part of that roof line. And they seen a man standing up there just the way Chief describes him. He's got that hat, he's got that long trench coat, and he's standing there with one leg up on that rail. And he's looking down, he's really interested in these cars that are driving around. They pull in, he'll look at them, they pull out, and he's just looking at all these cars standing up there. And finally he zeroes in on this one car. Uh, my buddy said he got really interested on that one car. And as soon as that guy walked in, he started pumping his gas and he walked in and to get, I guess he got like a 24 pack or something. And as soon as he's, he's seen him walk in, that man stepped off of that roof and he floated about halfway to his car, right through the air. They got it on camera and everything floated through the air, going toward that car about halfway. He turned into this like green light, like an orb, a green orb. And you could see on the cameras, you can see the back door open. And that orb float in there and the back door close. And that guy gets in his car, puts a gas pump, I mean, puts a gas bowser back in, gets in his car and drives off. Then they have the accident. And we all think, you know, <laughs> that that guy ended up killing him out there. Who knows what he did? He might have distracted him, made him roll his car, whatever it was. That guy died that night. And that thing that he talks about got in with him that night. Um, it's kind of odd because on my TikTok page, I just, before I came on here, finished um, putting up a story about that guy. You guys can go check that out. It's from one of my, it, it's a story that everybody knows in town. And um, it, it's on there right now. So I wouldn't bother telling that one. But the next story he talks about is same thing. He was a cop. And... They were getting, uh, people were calling in and reporting that there was somebody on this place called uh, Snow Slip or Snow Shed. It's just this little bridge that leads to East Glacier out from Browning and it, it passes over these railroad tracks. Well, there was a man up there jumping off of those rails into the middle of the road and causing people to swerve. And, you know, it was kind of dangerous. So they, he got the call, he responded to it and he went up there and, uh, as he drove up, sure enough, he seen that man and a cowboy hat, duster, you know, long trench coat. He seen that man and, and he pulled off. There's, there's a place up there you can pull off and that's where he pulled off. And before he even got to get out, that guy jumped, jumped off of that bridge. Well, at this time, my buddy didn't know that that was that thing. He thought it was just a guy that, you know, committed suicide right in front of him. So he drives down on that BLM road, goes down there and he shines his lights, you know, kind of gets his lights up and he puts his, uh, gets out, gets his flashlight on, starts looking around for him. Well, he sees him standing there down beneath there. And, uh, he, again, he's standing there. Like he said, he's standing like the Marlboro man. Like he's got his leg up on that fence and he's looking at him and he's smoking a cigarette. And I guess he smiles at my friend and he said the only way he can describe that smile that he looked at him with was on that movie smile if anybody's seen that movie smile oh, they got this smile that goes way up their face and that's the way he said it he said that's the only way i can describe it he said because they come out with a new movie and that's what it was like he says well anyways uh just then he slithered around that's the word he uses is slithers around that big post thing that's down there and he, he said, 
hey, come on, you got to come out, man, law enforcement, you got to come with me, you got to talk to me. And he takes his flashlight and he starts walking around that pole looking for him, looking all over for him. And that's the same story that Chief talks about, it. gone. Go to go look for him, he's gone. He wasn't there anywhere. So he gets in his car and he gets the hell out there. Uh, the next story he told me about that man, there was, there was a, uh, they were re remodeling the housing. The, there's a place called Old Low Rent. Those are some of the older houses and they were remodeling those. Well, they were sitting up there. How does it go? There was security that was sitting there and he was part of that, that, uh, cop that responded to those security officers because those security officers that were watching the houses being remodeled like security for that so nobody gets in there and steals lumber or whatever they're, they're kind of watching it but they're parked off kind of up by that same place where he was jumping off of that bridge to people you know trying to make them wreck near there there's a place up there where you can pull off too and they, they could see old Laurent from up there well what ended up happening was they got called up there to talk to these security officers because there's a guy that come knocking on the door, just pounding on it frantically. You know, let me in, let me in, let me in. And, you know, they, they, they realized he was wounded. And so that's why they called the cops right away. So when my buddy gets up there, he starts asking him what happened. What, what's going on here? You know, tell me the story. He says, you know, we, I was, uh, I was drinking over at some family, you know, over by Rodeo Drive, somewhere Knott's Landing. It's just a subdivision. Um, used to be like the subdivision closest to these railroad tracks heading out. There's another community out there just south of the railroad track. So anyways, it's quite a walk. And he says he was walking out to go to his other relations house or to his house and he was going to go to sleep out there. But he was walking away from that party and he thought he'd get on those railroad tracks and start walk, kind of cutting across this place he was going to. We call it Femaville. And uh, he was walking out that way. Well, anyways, uh, he sees this guy sitting on the railroad tracks. He's just sitting there. And he's kind of like kicking rocks, just sitting there. He walks by him. Oh, hi. And that guy says, oh, hello. He just keeps walking by. And so you see, think nothing of it. And, uh, Next thing you know, that guy started kicking his foot when he was walking. He got up and started following him and started kicking his foot. He said, what are you doing? He says, uh, he says I feel this, this kicking your foot. He says, don't, 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 don't do that. Stop. Don't, don't mess with me, man. I'm just trying to get home. Don't just leave me alone. He said, what do you want? He says, I want to cut you up. That's what I want to do to you. I want to, I want to see you in pain. <laughs> And he comes at him and he's got a knife. And that guy gets scared of so they start fighting. You know, he starts fighting for his life. And that guy's strong, he said. He said he was really strong. And instead of running to his house that direction, heck, he just start running the other way because that's when they end up breaking apart and he got away from him. That's the way he ended up running, was closer to that that uh snowshed area toward those houses that way. He just start running and anyways, um, when he finally got there to tell those guys what was going on, see, this guy didn't even know he was cut up all over his back because that thing was chasing him and cutting him on his back. And he gets up there and there's blood all over him and his back and they start checking him and yeah, he's, he's cut the hell back there, but he, he lived. But that thing he talks about is really bad. It's, it's real. It, it's on the res and I don't, you know, know what it is, people. People have stories about it, though. It's something real. I don't know what. Thank God I've never seen it. But every time I drive by Tom Pump, I tell you what, I'm looking up at the top of that place. <laughs> every time I drive by there. Every time yeah, I drive that sounds there, really terrifying, actually. Yeah, that thing is really, really bad. It's 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 powerful. It, it's it's bad, whatever it is. It's, it's yeah. really no good. But, um... So those just kind of reminded me of those stories what he was talking about but i got a few of my own right here and uh this one right here <laughs> is it th that guy is kind of like a hat man but he's more like a like a demon or something i don't know but anyways i got a story of this hat man uh so i'm at my house my i, I had just got out of the military and i was staying with my dad and anyways when i'm sleeping there that night uh 
I, I get paralyzed. I don't know how else to say it. I just couldn't move. I couldn't move. And so I'm laying there and I'm wondering what the heck's going on here. And I, I start looking around. I could move my eyeballs. Like I couldn't move my head. You know, nothing like that. But I was awake. I wasn't asleep. So I don't know if you want to call that sleep paralysis or what. I, I, I don't know. But anyways, I just can't move. I know I can't move. And uh, it's, it's terrifying if anyone's ever had that. But I'm laying there. And my wife's laying right beside me. Well, girlfriend at the time. She's laying right beside me. And uh, as soon as I start looking over by the door, I see this little man standing there. He must be about, oh, let's see, about, about four feet tall. And he's got this really wide hat. And it's, it exceeds the, it extends past the width of his shoulders. That's how wide his hat is. It looks like kind of like an old cowboy hat, kind of like one of those that, uh, you know, Clint Eastwood wears in a spaghetti western, kind of like that, but it's wide, and he's wide. He's built like, if anyone's ever seen that old Batman movie with Michael Keaton and he's got the penguin, that's how he kind of looked. It was like that thing, like he was wide and short like that. And I could see his face. His face was like gray. I don't know how else to say it, like gray, but. I couldn't see features like like you know like wrinkles and you know just that little I guess micro terrain you could call it all over your face these little things I, it just seemed smooth but what really kind of freaked me out about him was his eyes they were big they were like they were big you know like the size of uh well maybe like plums uh lemons even lines they, they were big big eyes and the look it had on its face was like this Kind of like a smile, uh, like, like say someone, like say you're, uh, like as if he was to convey to me, yeah, I got you now, now I got you, you know, he had this smile like that, and <laughs> he's just standing there, he wouldn't move, he's just standing there, like he wouldn't move anything, I couldn't see him swaying or anything, just staring at me, but I could see, see his eyes, like, a little bit of the light that was coming in, I could see it reflecting off his eyes. And eventually I was able to move my fingertip and I broke free of that somehow. I don't know how I did it, but I did it and he disappeared. Just straight up disappeared because I didn't hear the door open, nothing. He was just gone. Because, you know, all I did was just barely take my eyes off and look up at the ceiling and concentrate. Because looking down toward him took effort in itself. So instead I relaxed and that brought my eyes to the ceiling and I was able to concentrate on moving and I was able to get free and he was gone, just like that. So I must have been, that moving, when I jerked, I must have kind of woke up my girlfriend because I, I, I felt her move, but this time I put my hand on her, on her, uh, on her hip. I said, look, I'm, I'm having nightmares because I didn't want to scare her. I said, I'm having nightmares if, uh, if I start moving, you know, kind of scratch you or something, just wake me up, right? And she said, yeah, yeah, well, and, you know, she didn't really think nothing of it and just kind of went back to sleep because when I got out of the military, I was having quite a few nightmares, so it's kind of a normal thing. But anyways, uh, she said, yeah, she'd help me out, you know, wake me up. And I, I can't sleep. It must be like an hour of me just laying there looking for that damn thing again. I can't sleep. You know, I'm really freaked out. I'm kind of scared, but I just keep playing. I finally, eventually, I just doze off again. And I come to again in the same thing. I can't move. And I'm scared. I'm really scared because I can't move again. And I knew, I had a feeling that thing was around again. So I looked back to the direction it was at. This time, it's halfway closer to my bed. Closer to me. And it has this little boy and this little girl in front of it kind of on either side of it and he's standing in the middle behind them and that that little boy's just a bit shorter than that that man and that girl's a bit shorter than that little boy and they look the same but only thing they don't have hats on that little girl i remember she had like these pigtails and that little boy had these like uh suspender type pants like those old farm pants like they have the straps over yeah and a shirt under that and that little girl had a dress on their faces were the same, they were gray, and their eyes were big. 
and they were looking at me the same way like yeah yeah we got you now and i <laughs> i i was so scared i didn't know what to do i really didn't because they're just like i mean if i was to reach out i could have touched that little boy they were that close to me and just looking at me but they again they wouldn't move there was no swaying i didn't see no moving on them nothing but i stared at them for geez, it must have only been about 10 seconds but it felt like two hours just scared so i my hand was still on my girlfriend's hip and i started scratching her and she jumped she moved as soon as she did they they disappeared they were gone and i couldn't figure out what the hell was going on so I still didn't want to tell her what was going on because that house is really haunted at that that this is my dad's old house in Browning there, there was a lot of things in that house but so again I tell her look I'm just having nightmares and same whole process again I lay awake kind of just still looking for those things and not knowing what to expect and end up dozing off again same thing i wake up three times in one night three goddamn times in one night this time i looked for it in that direction again i totally expected them to be right in my face but they weren't there i couldn't see anything anything around that room and i could move my eyes just fine but i couldn't see anything in that room i mean i must have looked for like five minutes you know something like that just looking around in there nothing so I just lay like I did when I broke out of that before and I was going to start concentrating on breaking out of it. I was actually kind of getting bored because I couldn't move, but I was like, ah, well, I better just try to you know, do this again. And so I, I focused my eyes back up to the ceiling and God, there he was on the ceiling as a shadow. He was darker than all the other shadows coming in. It was blacker than black, this thing. But I seen his outline clear as hell and he was right above me looking down at me. But I couldn't see any features this time, just the darkness. But it was him, right on my ceiling, like looking at me. <laughs> and I... Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do nothing. I just laid there and it was this, like this blackness, like a, like a black, like, like it, almost like it could absorb all the shadows around it. It was that dark. So I, again, I, I move... Um, I was able to just move a little bit and she she was sensitive to it by then and she moved and well, got me out of that and I mean I'm telling you I just blinked and it was gone again it didn't happen anymore that night thank god and these I was going to school at the community college at the time and there was these old ladies down there yeah one of my classes one of my uncles was teaching I was during break and we all talk, you know, telling ghost stories and stuff, just talking about normal things. It's it's kind of like that back home. It's safe to share a lot of times. And so I'm telling them, geez, I'm really getting bothered up at that house, but I didn't want to tell them what it was. I just said, yeah, this things are bothering me up there. That's all I said. I just kept it like that. And so they start telling me, you know, do this, do that. And, you know, I, I listened to them and did what they said. And then anyways, you know, because I, I had smudge hair and everything and, you know, we smudged off that night and, and all that, but, you know, they taught me how to set up some barriers around my room. And so I, I used their way of doing it and it worked, you know, cause I was young yet, just got out of the military, been away from all the ceremonies stuff for a while at that point. And so I did what they said and I kept those things out of my room, but not at that house. They stayed in that house, whatever those things were, that there were multiple things in that house that what that hat man thing whatever that was it i never seen it again but one thing i know about those hat men this is why i was you know talking about these the other night while i was commenting last night is um so at the time i was going through a divorce and you know we had already been on the rocks for a long time and there was already a lot of suffering on my part because we had two kids together and I, I couldn't be with my kids. They're all the way up in Alaska. And I, I, I couldn't be with them and it was it was killing me. It was eating me alive. I was going off the deep end. I wasn't right. I was in a bad way, you know, I was drinking heavily. You know, and, and that kind of suffering that I was going through, it was almost to the point where I was gonna kill myself because I, I just couldn't take it anymore. The, the pain plus the nightmares, just everything. It was to the point where I was just gonna say to hell with it. You know, it's going to be easier if I just take the journey. I don't don't think I can endure this any longer. It was getting that bad. 
and that thing came around but after after i kind of snapped out of that and start realizing hey wait a minute now this isn't what i should be doing and you know i kind of got my head on my shoulders straight and i realized you know that you know, after that thing come around it kind of i knew there was it was getting bad so i kind of i guess picked myself up and and kind of start moving forward but anyways that i don't know chief you're listening if 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 you don't know this I left and went to SKC after that, and I seen you up there. <laughs> I seen you up there at that college. But anyways, those are my stories that I wanted to share for the night, and appreciate everybody that's listening. No. Well, I just want to say, Lodge Tales, that I'm glad you're still here, and you are oh, very appreciated. And we love your stories. We love two stories. We love your stories. We're always happy to have you. And, uh, oh, thanks. Thank you for coming up. And you guys, definitely go check out Lodge Tales podcast. Very cool stories. Go give him a follow and check out his videos. Appreciate it, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. All right, good night, man. <sighs> Not as scary tonight. <laughs> Yeah, tonight we've had some really intense stories. Lots of like getting me in my emotions kind of stories. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I was going to tell him um, that he freaked me out last night. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lodge Tales, if you're still here. <laughs> Chris is terrified of your spider story. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't like that one. I, I think we all were. I think everybody was thoroughly frightened by that one, especially. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got time for one more. Bring all the up. Oh, hi. Hello, guys. hello. Hey. Okay, so. I promised y'all a story and I'm going to share to you guys something that is the strangest of coincidences um, from a long time ago. <clears throat> so um, this happened right before my senior year, uh, around 2009 summer. I quite vaguely remember because this is my second beach trip in july so fourth of july like we were out in like freeport we had a great like beach fireworks blow up and everything and now um this was mid-july so it was just me a bunch of close friends uh we wanted to just you know hang out in the summer before our senior year so we went to galveston and we kind of like just spent the time over there later in the evening we just decided to this was friday so we decided to just stay out there um spend the day in galveston go on to the boats and we spent the night at an you know at one of the um it was an airbnb it was uh what well, now it is it was a friend's um beach house so we stayed there um we enjoyed you know the night the next day we had plans of like doing fishing boating and stuff like that so we did so this was going into saturday night now there was a bad storm coming it was beautiful and sunny and this this was a bad storm coming and just a year before in 2008 ike happened hurricane ike so people were still like you know shooken up from that so we were not going to get stuck out there in a beach house if it floods or something like that so we all just decided to pack up and grab some food um, towards another friend's house. We we're going to go back to Leak City. So Galveston, so where Leak City and Friendswood are, um, when you go straight to Galveston, you're going to go down a highway, I-45. And I-45 goes all the way straight to the sea wall in Galveston. It passes a place called Texas City. So it's another area that we passed through. So this was around, I mean, we left late knowing what we knew. Uh, so we just decided to crash at Andrew's house. 
And his parents were gone for like whatever for a week. And he's like, yeah, let's just go there. We're going to continue the party and whatnot. So we hopped into his um, SUV. And there was about like seven of us. So I wasn't the only one who witnessed this. It was like two-ish in the morning. We were driving back from Galveston going towards the city. Drive is about like 30 minutes. No traffic. I think we were the only car on the road at this time. So as we were driving, we were going over this bridge. Um, if you're a resident in Texas, especially around like, you know, Galveston area, south of Houston, you will know what I'm talking about. We passed the bridge. We're going towards this marsh area. And this was Texas City. So I quite frankly remember the exits and everything. And I was like in the front seat. Like I wasn't drunk or anything like that. I know my friends were, I was sober. I was in the front uh, passenger seat um, keeping, and it was three of us. So it was just Mikey, uh, Andrew was driving and Mikey was in the middle and I was in the side. So we were driving, we were all talking, talking. And on the side of the road, like there's nothing but marsh and seawater. I would say on the other side on the side of the road we see this well i see this girl i i'm the first one to spot this this is some some woman just strangely walking wet walking um like just on the side this dirt path at that time the highway the freeway i-45 wasn't as large as it is now um so she was just walking on this dirt path and I noticed it, and my friend Ashley behind me also noticed it at that time. She's like, who's that chick? And I was like, I see that girl too. You see that girl. And we were teenagers, so we're like all freaked out. We're making fun and everything. And so we passed her. And I was like, uh, what the fudge was that? And just, I would say, two minutes later, same figure or similar walking down the same path past us again okay and this is uh and that's when we all start freaking out and this is where we all see it and my friend mikey is just like grabbing onto me like finger lock like he is this i mean we were friends since childhood and this guy isn't afraid of anything you can tell he was afraid after that because we were all freaked out by the second sighting and i'm like whoa that is really freaky i was like should we call the police maybe if someone's stuck and my friend andrew who's driving kind of slows down he's like should we stop and ask i'm like are you lost your mind like no like we can call the cops as we go home let's go keep driving now here's the thing this third apparition this third girl was a little different, but at that time, we all thought it was the same chick. Now she's coming the other way. We don't see her face. Her head is down. I just see them kind of walking slow, this time facing us, you know, facing the car. And that is when the girls in the back are screaming, the other guy is screaming, and um, like... The car is like just, you know, a little bit moving because now we're all freaked out. We're screaming because we see this chick again and we're thought like, oh, my God, she, th this thing is just going to come into the car or whatever. We pass. This was um, another five minutes later. So we pass this whole Texas City area, the marsh area, I would say. This entire encounter happened within... 10 minutes of driving 10 minutes we were all shook we were all freaked out and no one knew what was that what was going on but everyone knew in our minds as we were going to whataburger that you know this wasn't right like we i think we saw a ghost or something like that so um Oh, Erod, I'm going to get to that in just a minute because this happened in 2009, summer of 2009. 
and none of us had any idea about where we lived. We don't know anything about the Texas Killing Fields at this point. Like this, this was a epiphany that happened like recently in my life because I found this out 10 years later. Um, so yeah, it could have been one of the victims. So we did definitely see a ghost and we went to Whataburger. I think Andrew was in a census. So he ordered food for everybody. He's like, okay, we just need to go home and calm down. Um, and so uh, I haven't tried those yet, Chris, I need to try those. Um, so we just, uh, whew, we went back home to Andrew's house. The first thing that I did was, and Mikey told me, it's like, you got to do the salt thing that grandma taught us. So I went into his house, his little brother opened the door and I asked him, I was like, Hey, where's your mom's like herbs and stuff like that? Where's the kitchen? So I went into the kitchen I told everybody to stay outside. I was like, just stay outside. Just give me one moment. And Ashley was like, listen to him. He knows what he's doing. So I went, I got a bowl. I poured some salt up in there. It was that umbrella lady. I remember everything. It's the, <laughs> it's the umbrella lady uh, sea salt. So I just poured that in there. Um, I poured um, some herbs like, uh, what was it? It was rosemary and basil. Mix it up said my prayer and I lined that door and I took whatever there was and I literally just threw it at my friends and they're like what the fuck and I was like yes I did this to cleanse the shit out of us because we saw a ghost did y'all not forget and you know we just saw that and I was like she back over there so everybody we're just making fun right we're teenagers we're just making fun and so it was over we won't go into the house and I light a candle, I put rosemary up in there with basil, cleansing herbs, cleanse out bad energy. You know, Veronica is suggesting let's put on some horror movies, eat some snacks. As if we didn't eat, we teenagers ate so much back then. I can't, I'm jealous of it, you know? Uh, <laughs> we ate so much. Um, so we were just watching, Veronica puts on a horror movie. And I'm just like thinking and thinking in the back of my head, like we saw a ghost or was it like somebody that probably needed help or whatever it was, but they would have been more flaggy, you know, if you're someone who's stuck on the side of the road, you need help, you'd flag it. You would be like, hey, you know, you would act, you would act right. And my guess would be like, you would act panicked and um, well, that happened in Texas City. Now, this is hometown. This is like close to home. It wasn't until like 2012, 13, not even, maybe 2015, where the movie Texas Killing Fields came out. I didn't watch it. My friends that were in, during college, my friends that were in um, college, Veronica and Ashley, they called us. And uh, they were just like, when we met up in the summer, they're like, have you seen this movie? I was like, I have not. And they're like, it's, you should watch it. It was freaky. It reminds me of that summer um, before senior year. And so I didn't watch it. Years go by on, then on Netflix, this Texas Killing Fields, um, you know, documentary comes out and I was watching this documentary and I thought nothing of it. And then suddenly in the middle of the documentary, I get flashbacks of that exact summer night. And my mind is blown because none of us knew me and my sister, we lived here my, our entire life. None of us knew about this. I guess we were kids back then. So we didn't really give a crap about, you know, murders and news and stuff like that. So it was just, um, it was mind blowing to the fact that that could have been it. That could have been the apparitions that we saw. I don't know if it was two different um, ghosts or if it was one, but yeah, this epiphany, this like mind blowing experience. I don't know if anybody else has ever felt this after years of being nonchalant about something, this random ass documentary kind of makes you relive that moment 
and makes you think that was that it were were those one of the murder victims that we saw this has never happened to me since then but quite frankly then i see comments or something like that on a facebook forum where people have seen certain same things they call it the the uh freeway girl or whatever the freeway ghost uh the or the i-45 ghost or something <sighs> And yeah, I mean, I just wanted to share that one. I was like, that was very freaky, but also kind of like funny at the same time. I was like, how did I not know? I live here my entire life. Like I lived in Friendswood and like the whole, you know, NASA, Texas City area and nothing, nothing. I never knew that this was right here. I never knew there was a bunch of more murders right here in Texas City, so-called Texas killing fields. So, honestly, after watching the documentary and looking at the pictures and stuff like that, nothing really jogs my memory as to details because I never really saw everything. Again, I was a teenager. I didn't really pay attention to details. I just knew that there was a crazy ghostly girl walking randomly in the middle of the night on the road like that. And no shoes, by the way. I knew no those details. No shoes. So... I'm just like, nope. And everything in the back of my neck, those hairs were standing up that night. And they were standing up again when I was watching that documentary. Because it's just like, it hits you. It hits you that this could have been it. And I don't know. But I ain't the one to drive out there in the middle of the night on that road to try again. But since then, construction has happened. Um, I don't even know if the apparition can be seen. As far as my knowledge goes, when changes happen, um, things do either increase or they decrease. But yeah, I mean, that freeway has been created twice the size and its width as it is now. So, yep, that's my story. And that's my, like, mind-blowing Thing that happened to me i'm like really i've i've lived this for like 10 years and i find out later so yeah <laughs> i don't know who else yeah, I've, I've never heard of this i'm gonna have to look into the documentary you're talking about in the or the movie or whatever but that is that is really spooky that's kind of an odd coincidence i mean if you know if it is one if it's uh it could just be straight up paranormal though i guess yeah, it could be and that's the thing i just do not know so i will always be inconclusive about it because mm -hmm. i don't know if that was a ghost of one of those girls that got killed i don't know because i never saw a face or nothing really related or i can't recall the clothing all i know was a girl it was a white girl and wet and no shoes like she just got she was out of the rain or something like that kind of like that but it was dry I promise you it was kind of like dry around that time. Um, maybe it rained here and there somewhere, but yeah, I mean, we knew there was a storm coming, so we just stuck it out. But that's all I remember, and I remember seeing that same entity three times on that stretch of road. So that it was like that. It was just the most freakiest thing that happened in one of my teenage years. Um like yeah and i just it just reminds me because um for some reason y'all were talking um when chief was t telling his story i was like wait a minute this actually did happen but this is just one of those epiphany things like this coincidence and it happened for so long that i just remember something that happened you know in 2009 and mm -hmm. the documentary just came out i was like wow but yeah, it was a freaky deaky event and a freaky deaky lived all over again in my living room when I was just watching this and I just <laughs> shook my sister. I was like, I was like, Sky, remember, remember I told you a long time ago because she was a little kid. She was a freshman. I was like, I saw that ghost lady like when we were coming in Galveston. She's like all those years. And I was like, she was like, no, I was like, yes, this could have been it. Look, see, they're talking about Texas City, all these murdered people and we don't even know. We drive by that place all the time. 
Wow, that is crazy. Yeah. But I don't know, um, it's kind of late, so I'm going to hop off and let someone else go. Alrighty, well that was that was a spooky one. I'm going to look into this because it sounds really interesting and I'm not familiar with the whole Texas killing field. So yeah, thank you for telling us that. Yeah, definitely look into it. Apparently it's a big thing and I didn't even know about it. I, and I, I confronted my mom and my dad about it. It's like, did y'all know about this? Um, because I was a kid back then. So they were like, mm, vaguely, something was on the news, but it was a while ago. Why do you care? And I was like, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming up and telling us about that. That's of course, spooky. of course. No problem. I was just exhausted. I was chasing three cats around all over the house. <laughs> Sounds like my day, too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Up to the next spooky story. All righty. We'll talk to you later. It is 2.01. That means it's time for me to go to bed. I'm sorry if you're in the guest box. I'm sorry. I tried. I tried to make it a little later. I'm not going to make it tonight. But the good news is we will be back here probably tomorrow night. Unless, you know, some catastrophic event takes place i'll be here chris will you be here yeah i'll make it all righty well we appreciate you all uh we appreciate everybody coming up sharing their stories and all of you for hanging out with us and uh you guys go show chris some love for being such a good co-host and uh we'll be back here tomorrow night around the same time about yeah, probably about 11 p.m eastern and we'll have some more spooky stories. So if you have one you want to tell, get in line quickly. <laughs> and uh, thank you all again. And we will see you later. Bye.